Oh, look, look, oh, look. Oh, shit. Yo. Whoa. What the fuck? The eclipse, man. We see it. We see the eclipse. It's like it's like a, a black hole, but it has a it has the ring it's of a sun. It's getting darker, bro. It's getting darker. Oh my god. It's oh, this is really dark. Oh, dude. Welcome, y'all, humans, everyone, listeners of the Pull Out Podcast. This is probably our most interesting episode yet. Yes, sir. Uh, we're on top of a rock, huge and, rock. Um, we had to sneak into here. Well, I didn't. I paid. You paid. Yeah, I paid. Did you pay? Yeah, of course. I never do anything illegal, dude. Okay. I love the United States and I respect this country. So I had to sneak in. And um, why did we sneak in? No, no. Why did you sneak in? I've never. Sn- <laughs> I didn't sneak in. I paid. So why did I sneak in? Um, Should I answer that question since I'm the only one who yeah, snuck yeah, in? Yeah, yeah. I mean, apparently, Steezy snuck in because um, where we're at. You had to like buy tickets for this mountain, like six months. What, what do they say? How well, it's called a rock. Yeah, this rock, enchanted um, rock. Yeah, so it's sold out in fifteen minutes. Reservation sold out in fifteen minutes because today is a very special day. It's April eighth, two thousand twenty-four, which is the day of the solar eclipse. And um, this rock, the solar eclipse, happens to pass almost exactly above this rock. Um, and, you know, they call that the path of totality. Path of, what does totality mean? Uh, it means darkness. So it's like the center of the moon's shadow. So the moon's shadow is actually really wide. Mm-hmm. It's like um, half of the country. But uh, none of that gets dark because only the center of the shadow gets dark. And the center of the shadow, I think, is about, I might be getting this wrong. I think it's like 10 miles, 20 miles wide. I think that's that's about right. I think that's about right. It's about 20 miles wide. And um, we happen to be in the center of that 20 mile wide uh, path. Now, that's how wide the path is. But the path, of course, goes from from like all across America, from Texas to Maine. No, all across the world. It well, all like across in Mexico the world, yeah. down there, like... Yeah, but I mean, we look at the American map because we lo- we live in America. Okay. But, it, but it, go- it starts in Mexico, and then it goes all the way up to Canada. But it peaks in America. I assume it it peaks in America because the further it goes out, it gets less dark and less dark. Okay. I mean, I don't, I'm not a scientist, but okay. I've been researching the shit out of this for the past uh, month. <laughs> oh, shit. Now, I should have been researching this for the past year because this place sold out for yeah. tickets, and that's why we had to sneak in. Well, no, I, I got tickets from someone. I know a guy. You know a guy. Yeah. Okay. Why Why don't you want to say that you snuck in? No, dude, I didn't, because I didn't. Like, you didn't I, sneak in? No, I don't like to lie. Okay. I respect this country too much and its people. Okay. So I had to buy tickets. They were expensive. They were like $300. I bought some resold tickets. Well, anyways, I guess, let me say the main part. It was Alejandro's idea to film the world's only podcast shot during a total solar eclipse. I don't know uh, if it's a solar eclipse. Is it? Solar eclipse? It's a solar eclipse. That's what it's called. Oh, okay. Why? Why do? You, what do you think a solar eclipse Cause, is? Because there's a lunar eclipse. You might be right. Yeah, this is solar. Let me eclipse. see what it says on. My I just glasses. know there's like two. There's like a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse. I just know what this is called. We can just call it an eclipse. Well, it's definitely called a solar eclipse. See, solar eclipse. It says on the glasses. Okay, 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 okay. Solar eclipse. I don't know what a lunar eclipse is. I but I don't know why you're trying to correct me because no, I'm the no, one I who's said, been I researching said, I didn't this. know. I said I didn't know. Hey, All relax, right. buddy. Just positive vibes during the eclipse. Positive vibes. Eclipse gang, man. Um. So why did you have the idea to to shoot the world's only podcast shot yeah. during a total uh, solar eclipse? Yeah. I mean, the thing is, by the way, guys, this is a chill podcast. You know, during the eclipse, we had to climb a lot to get here. So we're very tired. Like we had to climb a lot with a lot of luggage. So we're gonna start off chill. And then we're going to pick it back up. You know, sit back, relax, enjoy the eclipse with us. You know, get some food, get some drinks. Uh, make sure to join, you know, our subscription button for YouTube. You know, you get perks. Um, you get your name at the end of the video for five bucks. That's pretty good. Or for one dollar, you could just support us. Say you like this podcast and we can climb more mountains for you guys. Uh, thank you for everybody who's following us. Make sure to follow the Pull Out Blogs channel. We have a behind the scenes of this, how we got here. Uh... Also, it might go on Steezy's channel, another video. Um, but yeah, guys, make sure to pull out Boy's channel, subscribe to that. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, the reason why I want to shoot a podcast up here is because this is special rock, enchanted rock. So I'm like, okay, that's special already. And then, like Cece said, the solar eclipse happens to pass through Texas. And when was the last one? The last one that passed through Texas? Uh, 1979. That's 50 years ago? Wait. 80, 20, it's 40. It's about 44 years ago. 44. 45 years ago. 45 years ago. So the last one happened 45 years ago. And I was telling Steezy, imagine if we could capture the one in our lifetime where we're in our 20s and we shoot a podcast during it. I've never seen anybody shoot a podcast during a solar eclipse. I'm like, dude. What I'm scared of is like, I know I'm going to be looking back at this interview for the rest of my life. Because, dude, yeah. Because I mean, it's like, you know, that's something you tell your grandchildren. Like, hey, I shot an interview. I shot a podcast during one of the total solar eclipses. But now I'm, I'm so cautious for how I word everything because I know the older me is going to be watching this thinking like, damn, I was so stupid back then. I didn't right. know what I was talking about. Yeah. So right now I'm trying to be as intelligent as possible. Okay, okay, okay. I feel you on um, that. And I know my elderly self is laughing right now, shaking his stomach, you know, ha, 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 ha. About Because when's the, the next eclipse? When's it going to be when we're... Is it going to be in another four, third 20 So years? the next 40? the next total solar eclipse happening in America yeah. is going to happen in 2044. So in 20 so gonna, I'm going to be 44 years old. And I'm going to be 44 as well? <laughs> no? No, I'm not going to be 44? <laughs> How old are you actually going to be at that, I'm that time? I'm 28, so I'll be... You're not 28. How old am I? You're 29. Okay, I'm 29. I'm 29. I'm going to be 49. <laughs> Fuck, bro. I'm going to be 49. I'm going to have like 20 kids by then. Damn. 20 kids? <laughs> 20 kids, bro. Like five wives. That's crazy, bro. 45-year-old or 49-year-old me, you better have put out at least five films by 45 at least five um but yeah it's, cra it's crazy to think about dude. it's crazy to think about that we're gonna look back at this moment uh often a lot when we're bored we're gonna be like oh let's check out that podcast we shot during the solar eclipse uh you know we thought about guys we thought about what to talk about during such a special occasions you know some ideas came like heartbreak stories part two but Stacey was like what were you saying, dude? I don't. I don't have. I don't have a heartbreak. Story. Yeah, he's like. He's like. I don't have a heartbreak I story. I told my first heartbreak story, but like, I don't really have another. I. I mean, I just went through a heartbreak, but like, you broke the heart. It. It wasn't. I wouldn't say it like that either. But, you know, I think it was just the. Uh, it wasn't a heart. You know, was your heart did hurt. It. It. My heart did hurt. Right. And it was broken, kind of. Yeah, it was, it was shattered it was a little bit. It had a little crack in it. Okay. I mean, not to not to lighten it or anything. I mean, it was it was sad. It was very sad. Um. And I probably, yeah, I definitely still haven't gotten over it. But oh, shit. like, I initiated the breakup. But in the end, it it ended up being like a neutral, like agreed, like okay, yeah, we shouldn't keep doing this. Um. Just because I brought up the conversation, the tough conversations, like, hey, when do you want to get married? When do you want to have kids? Just to see if our timelines are matching up. Yeah. And it happened to be that, that they weren't. So, you know, I was like, hey, we probably shouldn't continue this and we shouldn't waste each other's time. But it was tough. It was tough because there was real love there. You loved her. Yeah. 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 It was the first time that I felt love for somebody that, that wasn't a part of my family. It was strange. Yeah, so that's why we're like heartbreak stories. I told Steezy, dude, you have one week to go fall in love and break the heart, you know, because we need another heartbreak story. But you know, he, he couldn't do it in time. I guess it takes longer to break a heart. Yeah, you want me to get a broken heart in in, in a week? Yeah, because we need just it for, for the podcast. podcast. Yeah, we need a story for the podcast. You should like it. Who, no, but I think we should just. I think we should just talk about whatever comes to mind. I think we should just treat it like a normal podcast. Yeah, I mean, I, I did want to talk about like you know thinking about the eclipse. By the way, relax. I'm relaxed. Relax, buddy. How am I not relaxed? I, I sense that you're tense. No, no, no. I'm not tense. I just got a massage last week. I'm not tense. Uh, okay. I mean, I'm just like the sun is really like hurting my eyes. I wish I had brought glasses, you know, so I'm, I, that might fuck with me. But um, um, yeah, man, I mean, dude, this, this eclipse just makes you think about life, you know, like it makes you realize how how small we are as humans. You know, from my from my research, I always watch like scientists talk about their experience when studying the eclipse and, and like they're preparing for months. 
And after they watch it, every single person says, it is not what I expected. Okay. I found myself overcome with fear. With, with, with fear. With awe. But like in an awful way. Like, oh, shit. Because it reminded them of, of how small they are. And it's something that's covering the thing that gives us life. And we're going to be covered for, for four minutes and 25 seconds. Wow. It's going to get cold. That's a lot of minutes. Yeah. It's going to get pitch black. Like we have the cameras on auto. That way they adjust to the darkness. But it's gonna get pitch black for us, I think. I mean, I don't know if it's gonna get like nighttime dark, but yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm I'm ready for it. The thing is, like, guys, it's it's gonna make us feel. I think our hearts are gonna be beating really, fast. really fast. Yeah, I mean, um, oh, oh, I see the moon covering it. it. I oh, see, shit. I see the moon covering. Hold on, it. let me get my glasses, guys. If you're watching this podcast, whoa, this dude, podcast, that's fucking. Strange. We're putting our glasses right now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. <laughs> oh, can you get this on camera? <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? How do we that record this? It's show show on the podcast. I mean, there's there's not really. I wouldn't stress about recording it too much. I mean, maybe if you could film it through the glasses. Oh yeah, see if, if you that works through the glasses. Wow, dude, this okay, guys. So right now we're seeing part of the moon dude, cover that the sun. Is fucking weird. We are live from the eclipse. We are seeing half of the moon cover the sun. It's getting crazy. Probably in about 30 Dude, minutes. This, gonna is a, this is going to be crazy. It's going to get wild. I mean, look, the animals are already acting weird. So so, so when, when Alejandro pitched this idea to me at first, I was like, uh, that's a really stupid idea. What a, the fuck? A, a podcast? You want to shoot a podcast during the eclipse? Yeah. But then I guess like one day passed by and I was really thinking like experiencing the eclipse while having an hour long conversation is probably going to make us like. It's probably gonna make the conversation take a very deep turn. Yeah, dude, I just hope my I just hope my cock grows during the eclipse. Like here we go. Here we go with Alejandro. I'm just saying, dude. Like, talk. if if a moon's gonna pass over me, at least pull my cock a little bit, make it grow. You know. Anyways, back to the deep conversations. <laughs> um, what's going on? Do you have like a piece of cloth or something? What happened? Um, Are you I'm just thinking weird? we might should, we should cover the audio recorder so, so it doesn't, doesn't get overheat. Hot? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I do have a piece of cloth. No, no. Or we could put it under the chair. Well, I got this shirt, but I actually, we can put it in the chair. All right, guys, we're, we're moving the. We don't want to overheat our yeah, yeah, recorder. No, works. And plus, it's easier to see if it's recording. Okay. Um. Yeah. So the eclipse. We're good. We're good. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. So other than the eclipse making me grow. Hey, that was a good catch. It's good. That was a good catch. That's what I say about Steezy, I need my man. flowers. Steezy always thinks about. So many things that could go wrong during filming, and he catches it. So that's that's one good thing that he's really good at. Now, like, I love cameras and I love the gear and the technicals of filmmaking, but I wish I could be behind the camera. Yeah. And, and since I have three million subscribers, oh shit, little flex. No, <laughs> little um, flex. Who am I flexing to? The audience. <laughs> to the millions of people watching this podcast. Um, we should honestly, you're right, dude. We should probably be smart. Because a lot of people might watch this podcast. That's what I'm saying. Like you, normally, you're the one who needs. Yeah, who yeah. Needs no, to no, watch no, what you no say. more cock jokes. I mean, I wish it did grow my cock. Because I mean, I've seen some that are nine inches, and I'm two inches. But you're right. Back so for, smart, for, smart, smart, smart. So now this podcast probably isn't going to get a lot of views at first, but in the future, it's going to roll on views and views and views. Okay, you're right. You're right, like, right guys. You know what? Scratch yeah. everything I said. This is the real me. You know, <laughs> smart now, and intelligent. Okay. You're right. You're right. Do we have to be our? We have to be our top selves during this podcast. Me, the the mo the main thing I'm worried about is I know my my elderly self is watching me right now. So oh, like that's why that's fuck. that's what I just feel the most pressure. Yeah. Um. Well, let me. You know, since there's probably <laughs> random people watching this. Yeah, there's random people I guess walking by me, as well. I just let me saw explain some people. who I am. Yeah. Who are I you? Guess. Um. Yeah. There's some people in the background. You guys are good. You guys are good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're good. You're good. You're good. Um, so, yeah. Let me just explain who I am quickly, because they know who you are, and we yeah, yeah, we yeah. want to talk about the yeah, eclipse no. and deep stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Aliens, I'll, I'll maybe give ghosts, it about yeah, don't women, worry. Don't alien worry. women. I got I gotta be smart. Dude. I can't be making jokes like that. All right, go for it. Um, so yeah, my name's Isaiah Shepard, also known as Steezy Kane, and I started making videos. Well, I started making videos when I was eight years old, really. But I didn't start my current YouTube channel, which is called Steezy Kane, until 2016, when I was in high school. 
But when I graduated, that's when I really started trying to go viral and trying to make it a career because I had senioritis. I was really scared of like what I wanted to do after I graduate. So I took a trip to L.A. and I filmed this quirky video of me jumping off the Santa Monica Pier for a girl's phone number. And it goes viral. World Star posts it. It gets 20 million views on Instagram. It gets 25 million views on YouTube. Um, somebody posts it on Twitter. It just blows up. And uh, then I started a popular series called Songs in Public. Um, and a bunch of other prank videos. And my YouTube channel goes from 2,000 subscribers to 500,000 in a month. Damn. And luckily, I was able to build a career out of it, kind of. I mean, I've been I've tried to make good money with it, but I've never really had good financial What's the, what's luck. the most you made? If you if you don't mind me asking, the most I made the like from one video or from in, in a yeah, month. Yeah, from one video and in a month. Um, from one video, I mean, this is crazy. I made, uh, I think it was twenty twenty five thousand dollars. Okay, not not that crazy. This is. I mean, compared to you, because you're you're. <laughs> well, yeah, guys. Can we talk about that? No, no, we can talk about the channel, but let's just say I, one video made me like 40K, 50K. Damn, and where did all that money go? I blew it all. I made half a million and I have zero. Like, literally, I'm actually $30,000 in debt. That's crazy how we're both almost the exact we're same amount We're both 30000 in debt. And you've made what over your career? Like half a million as well, would you say? Um, You know what's strange? I think I made a million dollars. A million dollars? Yeah. And you're $30,000 in debt? Yeah. And this is like in three years, right? No, this is this is throughout the whole thing. This is seven years. Seven years? Yeah. Okay. But it's weird because like I don't know where that money went. It just flies. It flies. When you're not intelligent. Yeah. So but hopefully this podcast can make that us. That might not 20 be million. accurate though, because when I was doing my books, I'm not good at it, but like I think some of that might be duplicated from like tra- transferring it from accounts or whatever. Anyways. Yeah. I don't know. Um Cause there's no way it's that much. Yeah, I don't think. Cause so. I don't believe that either. I think maybe half a million sounds about right. Anyways, uh, both of us have made some money, but we all we we, we lost it. <laughs> we lost, <laughs> lost it. And we're trying to find our way back. We're trying to find the money. Yeah. Because you need money to do what you want to do. You need money to, you know, fulfill your creative ambitions, to create the movies that you want to create, to create the art you want to create. Um. <laughs> But it's strange because usually the art that you want to create doesn't make money. Cash money too. And it's weird because we can both go back to the videos that we b- we were making back then and be making money right now, but we choose not to. And at first you didn't understand why I, didn't I couldn't understand do you. it. Yeah, I did. You didn't understand why. You were like, Steezy, why don't you just make those songs in public again? Why don't you just start selling merch again? Yep. Start making money again? But it's like something inside me is like, I just can't get myself to do it. I just don't like it. It, it feels like I'm pulling against my soul. Yeah. So now we're fail a bunch of failed YouTubers trying to pick for now. Trying to pick the, the timeline hasn't up. ended yet. We're still, we're still, we still got. It's still hope. As long as you don't give up, it's still hope. But uh, okay, so you were telling your story. What was the point of you telling your story? Um, I guess just so people have context of like who we are. I mean, you know, we're people of the internet. Oh yeah, I guess. Pick, yeah, I guess my quick story is um, I've been trying to blow up on YouTube for uh, for ten years, helping YouTubers here and there, and uh. Did a successful YouTube channel, you know, like one of those, like you don't have to show your face. And um, money came in, money came out, and uh, yeah, man, I mean, I'm still here. I think, uh, I think this podcast is something that I really want to grow. Learned a lot of lessons, did a lot of mistakes, and this is us just trying to teach the kids, you know, the up and coming generation to be bold, you know, be 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 brave and follow your dreams, but know. That is going to be a hard path. And uh, even once you achieve them, you're going to lose them. And then you have to find them again. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a long... I guess that's why they say enjoy the journey. Because there's never really a top. And when you're at the top, <laughs> it doesn't feel like you're at the top. That's the crazy part. Because, dude, you were at the top, but you didn't know you were at your top. You didn't know. And you didn't enjoy it. And now you're at the fucking way bottom. Um, so that's why if you enjoy the journey... You can look back and be like, you know what? At least I did all these things. You know, I might not have anything right now, but at least I did all these things. So, um, yeah, that's it. But I really want to go back talking about the Eclipse because this is the Solar Eclipse podcast. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about those other stories some other time. But um, like I was saying, man, thinking about the Eclipse, 
it just puts into perspective like this actually fuck i'm gonna start coughing like <coughs> there's like all these trees and stuff getting in my nose so guys, you want to switch seats why i mean it sounds like the light and the the light's fucking you want to switch pollen seats? is fucking you up i'm, I'm, I'm you down feeling? to switch seats um it might hurt you more though dude i think i can handle a little bit more i think i can you. handle it all right let's try it let's try it let's switch for a bit this is a very loose podcast, you know? There's not really strict rules. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, my God. Dude, this is beautiful. Yeah, this feels this fine. This, this feels very fine for me. Oof. Whoa. Dude, this is, this, is, this, is, this is amazing now. Now I can talk, dude. Now I can focus. There we go, dude. My energy picked back up. So why up. do you want to talk about the solar eclipse? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, the thing is, like, I realize we forget... This something. Oh, you want to look at the eclipse again? Okay, yeah, we're guys, we're gonna take we're gonna little. take a quick break and look at the eclipse again. Uh, we're gonna give you an update. Uh, let's see. Let's look. Oh fuck! Well, I looked at it same. with my eyes, bro. It looks the same. No, no, no. It's it, like it moved a couple of inches. But I honestly looked. It looks at like it. Pac-Man. Do like like the the. I looked at it with straight with my eyes. That's fine. If it's just for a little bit, that's fine. Wow, well, we gotta be careful. <laughs> um, yeah, like I was saying, um, we forget. The, the earth is alive, bro. We forget this. We're on, I feel like we're on top of a living thing. And, yeah. And, and, you know, when I say that sounds dumb, but as we drive in our cars, as we go to work, as we, you know, um, do all these mundane things, we forget that we're on top of a living and breathing organism. We forget that, that the earth is alive. I mean, and look, there's like huge planets rotating around us. Uh. There's rotating around us, or yeah, right. That's what it is. Uh, that's not really. That okay, really make huge rocks. Sense. Huge rocks. What about rocks? We can I say rocks. Uh, there's one rock revolving around us, not rotating around us. Okay. Well, it's also rotating around us, but all right, <laughs> They're revolving it. around us. You said this motherfucker said planets. Yeah. Now it kind of makes sense if you're talking about the other planets. They're kind of rotating. That's, that's, that's what I was saying. They're that's, rotating around that's us. That's what I was kinda, saying. But uh, um, by the way, if you're listening to this, yeah, anyways, okay. Um, and then the thing is that then you, then people are like worrying about their selfies and posting a TikTok video and they get stressed out because they don't get likes or views or like that a girl didn't message back or a guy didn't message back. And like, we think our lives are going to end because we lost our job or, or, you know, we get a bad haircut and we get all worried like, fuck, I have a bad haircut. I hate this. Or someone cuts us off in traffic and people get, you know. It's like, take a step back, breathe, look around. Like, th this thing is huge. Like, like all those things, are, they're man-made. Like, all those laws, all those problems, we make them bigger than they are. And um, I was thinking, I mean, to look at the animals. Dude, there's eagles flying out here. What the fuck? Dude, there's a thing in the air that eats worms. It's eating worms. What's your conclusion? that we forget that this place is magical. And I, I, don't, I mean, I'm a person of, you know, not much vocabulary. So that's the only word I could use, magical, as in... Um, okay, just think about this. Think about this. You know, this is water, right? This is water. And we need it to survive, right? Like, let me drink a little bit. <laughs> you know, like, we need that to survive. Mm-hmm. Guess where it comes from? Where does this come from? The earth. No, no, does it come from the earth? Where does it come from? From the sky, bro. Well. Just think about how lucky. You can say both. No, but think about how lucky we are that the thing we need to survive. But the reason. Drops from the earth. Yeah, but. No, I no, mean... this is not an argument. Don't, 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 this is an argument. This is just saying like, dude, the thing that we need to survive rain like comes from the sky often but it's not like the rain comes second what do you mean the rain second? the water comes first and that's what allowed allowed us to <coughs> to grow to be here it's not like we were here and then thankfully <laughs> oh water appeared and you no know, no but you're, but you're, getting, you're getting lost in what i'm saying because it could be multiple ways it could that, go away it could be multiple like this could have come from the ground or you have to like open a rock or like Kind of like like fruit, you know. I like have to like find it in a tree mm -hmm. or like cook it, dude. The main ingredient literally falls from the sky. 
Mm-hmm. The two main ingredients for life fall from the sky. The, the, the sunlight and water. Mm-hmm. Think about how lucky we are. <laughs> You're I, still coughing. It's, it's, I mean, the thing got inside my throat. It's scratching me in there like a bug or something. I think it's over. I'm, I'm going to keep coughing during the podcast, but it's all right. Well, you know on, what I mean by that? Yeah, but, I mean, it's not really... You know, no, no, don't think you're, too much. You're, just, just let it breathe, dude. Follow, follow with it. <laughs> follow with it, dude. You know, like during this is the eclipse. You know, don't let it eclipse your mind. Do you know what I'm? Do you know what I mean by that? Don't let it eclipse your mind. No, no, no. That the water. The thing is, like, we take. I guess what I'm saying is, we take these things for granted, and we forget how lucky we are. Dude, we forget how lucky we are. The water falls from the sky. I mean, gratefulness is uh, is a very important practice to do, especially in the morning, every morning, uh, to be gracious in life, in your success, in your career, oh, shit. in your family's health. Damn. Uh, sometimes I'll have phases where I'm, I kind of have a good track of every morning I'll, I'll take some time to be gracious. Um, sometimes I forget why it's important to be gracious, and other times I'm reminded of how crucial that that part is um because when you're not gracious what do you mean by gracious what does that mean to be grateful i think you're using that word wrong bro anyways i think you should say great you don't know the word gracious <laughs> i think gracious is like when you i mean i'm also dumb but <laughs> i think that like by the way these are two idiots talking to each other on a rock all right keep that in mind for everybody watching yeah. um <laughs> But yeah, I mean, because uh, it is it, it is so easy to get tied up into the whole, you know, I gotta get money, I gotta I gotta increase my social status within my circle, which is important. It's an instinctive human um, trait to you know be socially acceptable because you know with with status comes protection, survival, and it's survival, um, and also with status comes. You know, women, women, and that's you know, more survival. Mate prospects, and the whole point of life is to spread your seed and 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 raise a strong child, and create another one of yourself to bring into the world. At least that's what we think is the purpose. That's what the purpose is from our human perspective. Um. But you know, we're never gonna know why we're here. We're never gonna know like what this is. Maybe we find out when we die. Maybe we're reborn. Maybe we get reincarnated, and then we forget all over again. <laughs> um, but there's so much amb- ambiguity that I always find myself landing back <laughs> at the mindset of "There's no point." There's, what the fuck? There's there's no point in trying to find out. So while I'm here, okay, okay, I like that. Let me just dance. Oh, okay, I fuck with um, that. Let's dance. Just dance. So you know, th- there's a there's a scene that I want to make where. There's there's a group of people dancing to some music. Um, and then one person stops dancing and looks around. And he taps the guy to his left on his shoulder like, hey, hey, man, where are we going? And then that person stops dancing because now he's wondering. And he's like, oh, yeah, you're right. Hey, man, where are we going? He asked somebody else. And then that person asked somebody else. That person asked somebody else until the question reaches the whole crowd and the whole crowd's not dancing anymore. And the whole crowd is asking the DJ, hey, man, where are we going? And then the DJ stops playing music, and he's like, you guys are right. Hey, where are we going? And then he asks, like, one of the higher-ups. And then the higher-ups ask another higher-up until the question reaches the captain. And the captain wonders, looks around, turns around to find a wheel behind him. And he forgets that he's steering a ship. (laughs) And then once all the people realize that the captain doesn't even know where they're all going, they all just start dancing again. What does that mean? I don't even know what the fuck that means. It means that... When you realize that nobody knows what's going on here, and I'm talking on an existential level with the earth, you know, we have all these laws made up. We're guessing what is the right thing to do. Maybe the government is hiding something from us, but really what I think is they don't even know what's going on. Nobody knows what's going on. Nobody knows what a soul is. Nobody knows what consciousness is. Maybe the CIA knows. They have some suspicious files, but really, since... We don't know anything. The only thing is to do is just to dance and have fun. Okay. Live a great life and and experience. (coughs) 
Ugh. Damn, you're really uh, you're really coughing a lot. I mean, they're wearing them like the guy's a bug when it's time I throw it and it's fucking scratching the shit out of it. But um, like, you know, another thing is like right now, I feel so much fire within me. To do um, what? To do what? To play the game. And what I mean by the game is right now what I think is best for me to do is to create a TV show about my experience in the creator economy, in the YouTube industry or whatever you want to call it. And um, I think that that's just the best way for me to um, to have a company support me and, and have them give me money to create the art that I want to create, to kick off my film and TV career. Because I think I would do really well in film and TV but with YouTube, I've always I've always struggled with financial issues. Um, I, I I've never really been able to get the ball rolling. And the TV show is the most realistic way for me to have the most passion in the art that I want to do, and also get the most money. And again, everything comes back to money because you need money to to make what you want to make, to do what you want to do. I don't really care about money. I, I don't want to like you know find something to profit off of. I just want to create these pieces that I can hold with me for the rest of my lifetime and and put out into the world that they could inspire other creators that are going to come off of up that are going to be inspired by my work and then they eventually go off and create amazing work themselves but right now I'm really trying to and I know that this is a lifelong journey but right now I'm really trying to find purpose I can get drive, I can get motivation, but drive and motivation usually only lasts a few hours, really. I was going to say a couple of days, but really, it only lasts a few hours. But purpose, sometimes I try to remind myself that what I'm doing is bigger than me. What I do right now affects my future kids, it affects my family, it affects everything in front of me. So like while I'm alive, I should use 100% of my energy. But it's just hard to remember that. And it's hard to, to, to keep that energy. It's so easy to say tomorrow. We're just letting it breathe, guys. I don't know if that hits you. I don't know. <sighs> so you want to... So right now, from, from 1 to 10, how much... Are you debating and quitting YouTube? I think I already made up my mind subconsciously. Because every time I, I try to film, it's it's not fun. So 10. You just want to quit YouTube right now. Yeah, and what's crazy is even like on the Sneeko video. Uh, Which one? In 2019, I said, I'm going to quit YouTube in five years. And it's 2024 now. Five years later. It's five years later. Um. You know, I, I think right now w the smart thing to do is just to just to hang it up, hang it up and, and dive fully into the TV show. But it's hard because, like, you know, I'm, I'm struggling financially right now. So it's it's hard to hang it up because uh, how much money do you have in your bank account? Um, like, let, let, let these I guys think four hundred dollars, four hundred dollars left. Yeah. Yeah. Four hundred dollars left. And how much like. Have you paid rent? Like what? Um, I paid rent with a credit card, so I'm good for two months. <laughs> so what happens after those two months? You have a plan? Like if if you don't make money? I don't know, man. I mean, cause like again, I could I could go back to YouTube and I could be making prank videos and selling merch. I could just put my ego to the side and do that. Yeah, and I've tried to. Yeah, I've tried to, but it's it's just like I I I cannot do it. I I, I cannot do it. It. It feels impossible. It just, I don't have the passion for it. I don't like it. It does not make me happy. And I know where that road goes. I can make some money off of it, but like it requires money. I have to put money to to make those videos, to make the merch. And really, I mean, I'm not going to make, I mean, looking back at how much money I made throughout my career and the fact that I don't have any of that in savings or anything, a mix of it is me being bad with money and a mix of it is all the expenses being very high yeah because everybody tells you like reinvest the money back into the business right that's what everybody always says and i was doing that for a year straight i was making like 20k a month but also spending 20k a month and i was like okay let me just do this for a year i'm not saving any of the money 
but let me make 20k and put 20k back in make 20k put put 20 20k back in and i i was thinking like eventually if you do that for long enough you're gonna be make the, you know you're gonna be catapulted the ball's gonna get rolling down the hill and you'll start making a lot of money but it just never got to that point and thank god it never got to that point because i don't i didn't like that work i think if it did get to that point and i started making a lot of money like how would i quit then it would be a lot harder to quit then yeah you you'll feel like you're too too deep into it to quit like right now you still feel like you're too deep into it to quit right like you're like i'm too deep in this youtube thing you have 3 million subscribers how can you quit it would be dumb to throw away a channel that big yeah so someone that's uh something something that someone was telling me that wants to help me on the tv show was he was like what if you just quit YouTube and make it public and try to get press and use that as a way to get the attention of networks for your show? I thought that was a, also a really, really genius idea. Or maybe make like a mini web series of the show and put it out on YouTube as the last. But, but you need money for that. Yeah, I need money for that. <laughs> you would need like what, like 100K? For a mini web series? No, not that much. No, because a mini web series is five minutes an episode. How much would you need? Um, for a mini web series, I think um, if I want to make it good, I think it could be done for five k an episode. So you need like what, like thirty k? Um, for a ten episode season, so forty k, fifty k. I mean, cause I mean that's how high maintenance got started. What's high maintenance? We don't high maintenance is. is an HBO show. Um, it's 30 minutes an episode. It's a half hour series. And it got picked up in 2016 by HBO Max. But really, they, they post the mini web series version in 2012. They posted five minute episodes on their YouTube channel. Ben Seclair did that with his wife. And uh, it took four years for it to get picked up, but eventually got picked up. I don't know what the budget was per episode, but I'm guessing it's in the 500K to million, multi million dollar range. But HBO saw the potential in the show, picked it up and bought it and put it on HBO and made a half hour series version of it. And I know that I'm in a I'm I'm in a really good position to get a deal like that. I think views can sell for like 10 million dollars with with lots of creative control. I have to make a web series for it first. Um but like I find myself in a very similar position as Donald Glover, Issa Rae and Bo Burnham when they were in their YouTube stages cuz they all come from YouTube. Issa Rae had her Misadventures of a Black Girl show. Misadventures of an Awkward Black Girl. She did like three minute sketches filmed on like a shitty camcorder. And uh, I don't know exactly how it got to that point, but HBO eventually came to her and gave her a two year deal to make all her exclusive <coughs> movies and shows on HBO. And then they came back with a, I think, five year deal. It was like a $40 million deal. Damn, that's a lot of money. And bro. like, I, I don't give a shit about the money. I don't give a shit give, about give the money. Give it to me. Give it to me. I do. I do. But you get the show, I get the money. But you know, if you if you if you can close a deal like that, now the money problems are set aside and you can focus purely on creative. Of course, you're gonna have to fight executives on notes and whatnot, but like I like to look at that as good pressure because we're all a team and we're all just trying to make the best show possible. Now, executives uh executives tastes usually is trash because they don't really know what is good art, but yada yada yada. I, I'm going on. He's going, going on, 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 but like, uh, no, I mean, I mean, this is good because a lot of your fans, you know, always wonder like, why is this easy posting? Where is easy? You know, like, how can you leave a channel with so many subscribers? How can you abandon your fans? And the thing is, guys, you know, to all those kids that want to be YouTubers, you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Huh. I'm just pissed off. Yeah, dude. I thought you were gonna like kill somebody. I've never seen you like this. But uh, <laughs> to, you know, you know what I just thought of? I could have given uh, Emmanuel my keys. Once we're here, he could have gone back and driven my car off. Oh, well, we should explain the story of coming here, but finish your rant. Hell no. Nah. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I don't want to explain that story. Uh, oh, my God. My hiccups are coming back. No. L later. later. Uh, um, basically, um, yeah, what I was saying is, uh, there's a story I don't want to tell, guys. Um <clears throat> To all those people who want to be YouTubers, because I remember um, this teacher, you know, said that 
She said that kids nowadays. Can, are, you know, you listening? Mm-hmm. She said that kids nowadays. I think she said thirty or twenty percent of kids in school, when she asks them, "Hey, what do you want to do?" They say YouTube, and they don't pay attention in class. She says kids don't pay attention in class anymore because they're like, "We want to do YouTube, social media." And none of the shit you're teaching us. You is- said 20, 30 percent. It's more than that. It's more? the number one most aspiring job for elementary and middle schoolers. I think even high schoolers. We are the new astronauts, which is well, I'm so not. You strange. are. You made it. I still haven't made it. Um, and it's so goofy. YouTubers are the new astronauts because being an astronaut was the most aspiring job to kids. In back Cowboys, when I was right? back when I was in elementary school, whenever the teacher asked, "Hey, what do you want to be when you grow up?" the whole class said astronaut. You said astronaut. All the boys said astronaut. You said astronaut. Um, I don't remember what I said. I think I did, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So that so basically that's what it said. It said kids nowadays most of them want to be YouTubers or social media influencers, and they're not paying attention in class. Now, <clears throat> all of you guys who want to be YouTubers and all that, I want you to listen to this. Steezy, someone who's made it in YouTube with 3 million subscribers, and Steezy blew up quick. So he'll tell you what the fame really feels like. <clears throat> what advice would you... Cause there's a lot of kids listening to this, and they all want to be YouTubers. That's why they're actually watching this podcast, because of you. You know, they saw you blow up, they got inspired by you, and they saw you at the top. Now, someone who's lived through that, what can you tell these kids who want to be YouTubers? The reality of the YouTube the lifestyle. Because you know how YouTubers edit their videos, make their lifestyle seem this way, flex things on camera, do all this. Because I'm sure all these people think you're a millionaire. Like, well, not, not the people who listen to the podcast because they know. But new subscribers that came from your channel right now because you shouted out this podcast, they don't know this about you. They don't know that you're $30,000 in debt. I remember when I was little, uh, there, was a, there was a day that I became an uncle. And I remember I was in the McDonald's drive-thru um, asking my mom to get me a... Uh, oh, here we go. All I'm just falling in the chair. Fuck, bro. Just, just ignore it. Just ignore slid it. Slid down. The um, fucking mountain. <laughs> my God. Um, yeah, I was in the McDonald's drive-thru. I was young, and I just became an uncle. And um, I remember asking myself as a kid, holy shit, I'm an uncle. How does this feel? Let me try to close my eyes and focus. What does it feel like to be an uncle? Thinking, 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 huh. It doesn't feel like anything. Are you listening? Yeah, but I looked at the sun by accident. Um, from my eyes. Like, it doesn't really feel like anything to be something. To be an uncle. Like, that doesn't, there's no, there's, I thought for some reason there was going to be like a warm feeling that comes. Oh, this new feeling of being an uncle. <laughs> when you, uh, when you, when you succeed in anything. And for my example, social media, when I saw those subscribers climbing, I think it was 30,000 subscribers a day. Damn. Um, it didn't feel like anything. Like, I thought there was going to be, like, this, like, like I was going to get a crown on my head or, like, you know, I'm going to, like, feel like my posture is straighter and, like, my life is more colorful and everything's, you know. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Uh, you know, after watching the subscriber count hit 100,000, you know, I still go brush my teeth before bed. Well, you said like maybe you felt good for like two seconds, three seconds. Maybe you feel like, oh, hell yeah. And then back to reality. No. Not even that? No. I remember when I hit a million, I was driving and I pulled over to watch my subscriber count pass a million. There's no feeling. Maybe you're just a depressed guy. <laughs> what do you mean there's no feeling, dude? No, but, no, but, no, but I think it all comes back to like, wow, I can see it. I can see the sun. Covered Dude, with you, my own eyes. You gotta use a, no, no, it doesn't. Glasses, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> Fuck that, bro. I'm using the glasses. I want to see my wife when I marry her. It doesn't her. hurt. I can't see shit with these glasses. Is it, is it working when you record on the camera? Dope. Yeah, I can't see shit with these glasses. Dude, we just got clouded. It was sunny. The clouds came. Fuck. No, but we're going to be able to see it. Look, you can see it with your own eyes. Ah, oh, fuck that, dude. I can't see uh, shit. 133 is when the darkness hits. What time is it? 111. All right, guys. Um, I got to take a piss. Go for it. I'll, yeah. I'll, I can handle this. On Entertain my own. the audience. And by the way, I know the elderly version of me watching. He's uh, he's disappointed in what I'm saying. Bro, I, I feel like I'm talking out of my ass. I'm sorry, uh, future Isaiah. Uh, I will improve my speaking skills. Me too. Okay, I'm gonna go take a piss. <laughs> All right, guys. Steve's gotta go take a piss. I I gotta take a dump, but like I'm holding it in for you guys because I don't want to leave this set. 
you know. And uh, so we got 20 minutes till countdown. So the eclipse covers this whole mountain. And uh, from we've read some reviews on it, on what eclipse feels like. And supposedly, you know, the, the, the animals start acting weird. The temperature drops dramatically. And um, they say you can feel stuff in your spirit. You know, as a human being, you start feeling like the whole world. And, I mean, <coughs> I mean, uh, it, it's, it's, if, if you're listening to this, come watch the YouTube version, the YouTube video. And uh, to really appreciate where we're at in this mountain. Um, damn, but this guy has, has a lot of energy. Um, yeah, so Stacey's back. Um, but guys, if you ever in your lifetime have a chance to look at the eclipse, well, actually, I'll say what it feels like after we see it. It might not be worth it. I might say, don't give a fuck, fuck the eclipse. So we got 20 minutes till countdown. I see a bunch of eagles. They're surrounding us. Um, it's getting colder too. I do feel like it's getting colder. Yeah, it's dropping it's been, a few it's, degrees. It's been getting a lot colder. Dropping a few degrees. <laughs> Um, Jesus, man. Oh, yeah. So, what oh, the there's fuck someone was that paragliding. Sound? Holy shit, dude. He's flying by himself. Can you record that? Just so we can add it to the video? Dude, that guy is crazy. Dude, he's going to see a Have crazy seen, eclipse. Yeah, bro. he's going to see a crazy one. Dude, he's been planning this shit for months. Guys, there's a guy paragliding, which means he's like on this like motor thing that flies. I don't know how those things work. I don't even know if it's called a paragl paraglider. But he's going to see the eclipse. Dude, he's going to see the whole shadow from up there. Yeah. Dude, what if it shuts off because of the eclipse? <laughs> Did he ever think of that? <laughs> like it just No, but shuts he can off? glide down. But why would, it, why would it shut down? Like some weird EMP effect? Yeah, it shuts everything. Dude, what if all the whole cameras get erased, the memories? I mean, then it was meant to be. It Fuck. was meant not to be. Damn. Um, so, yeah, you were talking about how you're depressed and your future is going to hate you. I was going to say something really cool. <laughs> Jesus. Bro. Um, what were you going to say that was very cool? Oh, the so winds are probably going to get crazy because of the, the cold and hot air being combined. It's getting really windy, guys. Very windy. And I'm feeling my stomach tingle. Uh, I'm feeling very nervous. Yeah? This I is, mean, this it's, is getting, it's getting me darker. Nervous. It's getting way darker. Um... All right, let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. We're gonna keep going, guys. Uh, live from the eclipse, the pullout boys, the first podcast in the world, in history, to be shot during an eclipse. Um, hopefully, I mean, I don't know, but it's cool saying that. No, I looked it up. There is none. There's none. Yeah, I looked it up. There's none. No podcast. No during podcast an eclipse. during an eclipse. Whew. That's crazy. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, so you were. Well, what, if, what if after this one is just like, like so many hundred? A thousand podcasts. World's only podcast. No, no, the but, world's only but podcast. that's why, guys, I'm going to try to edit this as soon as I can and just publish it. Um, but, I mean, it's going to take two hours to get home. So, uh, um, but you were saying that you were. What the fuck were you saying, buddy? Um, <coughs> what were you saying? That my older self was going to be very annoyed at how. How I'm talking out of my ass and I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, because you were saying, what were you saying? I forgot. I I, I forgot. Let's well, just switch the topic. Okay. Okay, let's switch the topic. We're gonna <laughs> switch the topic. Uh, but I was gonna say something so important, man. But you needed to take a piss. Fuck. Who do you think is gonna die first? What the fuck? Now that's crazy talk. But uh, I think we'll die at the same time holding hands. What the fuck? <laughs> what? What? No, no. If I had to die, honestly, I do want to die with my wife holding hands. You know, have you seen like that movie? Like the Titanic, when they're laying in bed together and the, the room oh, is flooding. Oh, well, not drowned, but yeah. The, the, the holding hands with my wife, very old. And yeah, we, we die together. How would you guys die together? Of old age? Of old age. Because you guys can't die at the same time. <laughs> Of, of old, old age. age. That would be an insane And if I see that I'm dying faster than her, I'll just stab her real quick. <laughs> you know? Just to kind of like, hey, hey, you're, you're not dying like I am, you know? Um, would but, you rather you die first or your wife dies first? Not uh, in this scenario, just like in general. I would say she dies first because I don't want her to go through the pain of me dying first. And she has to live by herself. You know? I want her to be happy. 
Okay. So for any girls listening out there. That means that you have to go through that pain. I'll go through the pain for you, baby. You know, if any girls out there, I'm that guy. I'll take care of you. Wow. Uh, Alejandro getting romantic. Uh, dude, that's I, think, that's I think the eclipse dude, is making me very romantic. So watch out. Anybody out here? Yeah, I mean, it's only guys out here, man. <laughs> well, watch out, guys. No, no, but honestly, dude, I feel like the eclipse is going to change who I am. It's going to rejuvenate all my cells. I'm going to start shivering. It's getting really cold. Yeah? <laughs> we should have brought jackets. We should have brought a lot of things. I mean, we're not prepared at all, guys. But uh, once the sun comes back out, we're going to feel so good. Like, oh, there's the sun. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, what time is it? What's the countdown now? Can we get it's 118. When, so we have... Uh, how long do we have? 13 One, minutes left? I 13 think? minutes for the for the total eclipse? 15 minutes. 15 for the total, minutes. total eclipse? Yeah. No fucking way. Wait, let me take a look at it, how it looks now. 13 minutes? That's... Yeah. Oh, shit, dude, you're right. What the fuck? Yo, it's about to be covered up. Oh, yeah. Did we see that shadow anywhere? Yeah. Yo, yeah. this thing is about to be covered up. We have 13 minutes. The shadow's going to come from that way, so we're not going to see it coming. But we're going to see the shadow leaving. <laughs> fuck, dude, I think the demons are leaving my body. Wow, 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 man. That, that, that sun looks like, a, it looks like a waxing crescent moon. Actually, Dude, no, that's a waning crescent. Hopefully we get to see it because all these clouds are... Isn't that crazy that the, the the moon, I mean, the sun looks like the moon? Yes, that is that is wild. It's a waning crescent sun. Um, So I guess let's, let's hit some deep topics during, during, during the eclipse. I mean, so if this is a failure, we got that down. Yeah. Uh, um, and I'm a failure. We already knew that. We got that down. But everything could change for now. Let's say for now. You know, we're failures for the, now. The, the solar eclipse is the transitioning point. This is where this we This is change. the midpoint. This is the midpoint of our careers where we take off from here. Mm -hmm. And who knows? Dude, maybe this podcast blows up. And it was the podcast that blew up. Well, we got to say more. For some reason, we die because of the eclipse or something. <laughs> we got we to gotta say smarter <laughs> things. But let's, let's use all our energy to be very smart. Um, I mean, now, now that we see the eclipse, I want to ask you this question. Do you think we're alone in the world? How do you feel? Because you know we we keep thinking like we keep thinking as humans. I mean, I mean, the universe is. I don't know how old it is or how wide it is. It's billions of light years wide, I assume. Billions or millions. Billions. Um, billions. I'm not a scientist, so yeah, we're not scientists. Know, it makes sense why I don't know, but no, I believe that there's there's others out there. Because you can't have billions of light years of space. And, you know, there, there's no one else out there. Unless we're being lied to and there's no such thing as space. Maybe the moon landing is fake and the government is lying to us and we live under a dome. <laughs> and the solar eclipse is... Uh, is they're switching staged. the light? They're um, switching the light bulbs so they got to cover it up? They're switching the light bulbs. You know? That's what an eclipse is. They switch the light bulbs. Uh, but, but, yeah, if we're being lied to, then all of this is, you know, fugazi, fugazi. But, uh... Do you think we're being lied to, or do you think there's actually space? Do you think the sun... Because what, what makes me very suspicious is how do they know, like, what's inside the sun? Have you seen those pictures where they cut the sun, like a pie, I assume and they show the, those the are layers? All theories. I assume the, those are all theories. Or they even... Um, I just... How do they know... You know, I'm, I'm sure there's very simple answers to this. How do they know the temperature of the sun? How do they know how big one of the suns are that's in another galaxy? Yeah. How do they see that far out? Like, I, I think they're all like theories, bro. They're not theories. I'm pretty sure well, they're the cold facts. But also, we should probably avoid this side of the conversation because, like, yeah, we're gonna sound you know dumber than we sound. Lots now. of scientists are gonna watch this podcast. Let, well, I, I, they <laughs> are gonna be laughing their asses or high. off. But let's talk about stuff we no one knows the answer to. You know, maybe, maybe yeah. we can help uh, with that. Um, I think because you asked me if I think we're being lied to. You know, I have you seen the anime Attack on Titan? I watched about like four episodes. Okay, basically, is a uh, uh, this this civilization that lives behind walls, and they know nothing about the outside world. Okay, they know nothing about the outside world, and their technology is very primitive. Their technology is very primitive, and they think the outside world is very dangerous. A spoiler alert! You know, I'm gonna spoil it. Um, when they get out, they realize, dude. When they when they leave the walls, they realize. There are civilizations with so much technology out there, like humans. They were just behind these walls, and there's humans with airplanes, with all these crazy technology. So I feel like that might be us right now. We're inside this, like, that we can't see it. Maybe what's <clears throat> hidden is uh, beyond Antarctica. 
Yeah, and then and then we're just like behind those walls, and we think this is the current technology, but we're probably like closed off. For some reason, maybe it's very dangerous out there if we go into those things. Um, but I I do think. Oh shit! Can, can, wait, he's got he's got it he's got it. <laughs> I do for think, the audio listeners. I doubt anybody's listening to this on audio. That would be weird. If you're listening to this on audio, go to YouTube. Yeah, come because you're not going to see the eclipse. Um, um, no, the, but one I, of the one of the things I do think, man, we, we are uh, we're being lied to. I don't know the reason. Dude, um, it's getting really cold. Maybe money. Maybe money. We're being lied to because of money. But there's so many things that we don't know. Maybe we're being lied to because we're uh, we're being used for energy. We we are batteries, like the Matrix. Maybe I've heard this theory that uh, like we're all enslaved, <clears throat> but we just don't know it. Yeah, I've heard this theory that <laughs> that like negative energy fuels certain things. So that's why they 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 keep us in negative negative vibes. You know, there's always like shit going around the world. The news always report bad news constantly. So they keep us in afraid. They keep us everybody afraid. Everybody's scared. And uh, that's like a thing. That, like if everybody's scared, we send some sort of frequency i believe in that you know um but i mean i saw this thing in the joe rogan podcast uh shout out to joe rogan you know what i'm saying go check yeah, out that sure, smaller I'm sure he needs a go check out. out a small podcast um uh, that dude there's a this there's like humans out there being cloned and being grown in labs with like pig pig dna and since it's like it's a human hybrid there's no laws so you can like cut its organs Put it in slavery, you know, because it's not a human. It's part human. So there currently are no laws for hybrid humans. Uh, and there's pictures of that, dude. There's, there's, that, there's, that's happening out there somewhere in the world. Hybrid humans? Yeah. There's, the, they, they put some human DNA, some pig DNA, part human, part pig. And, uh, dude, there's just so much shit about the world that we don't know. I mean, do you believe that? Or do you think like, ah, fuck this guy. That makes no sense. Fuck this guy. What do you mean, dude? Look like, at all this, I, look at no, our phones. You no, think no, we can't no, clone but, humans? Oh, do you, no, but, you think we clone humans? How about that? I, you think we can clone humans? I don't know. Whenever whenever the conversation leans that way, I just kind of tune out. Just because it just, I, I haven't gotten that far into my own curiosity and I don't really care. So you don't think we can clone humans with all the technology you've seen? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's a simple. I I, I just don't. I I don't know. I I'm not a scientist. I didn't say I would, you were a I would scientist, assume you buddy. could you could you could copy chromosomes. I mean, it's pretty simple. DNA doesn't have that much information in it. Maybe it does, I, but I don't know. I don't know. So you can clone a human, yes or no? I think so, but like I I don't know too much. Like. I, okay, I guess this is this isn't. Is that count? Is that clips happening? What's the countdown? Um, we have. Eight minutes on the clock. Eight minutes, fuck, dude! It's covered up by clouds. No, there'll, there'll be there'll be gaps, and it looks like it's about to rain. Fuck, guys. It was nice knowing y'all. If this eclipse kills us, uh, I want to tell that girl that I love her. You know what I'm saying? It's not gonna rain. Zero percent chance of rain. Oh, never mind. I don't love you. It's not gonna rain anymore. I'm not gonna die. Um, dude, I feel like you're too cold, bro. I mean, what, what's going on, dude? I don't feel the vibes from you, dude. You're just like in another world. Like you're lost. You're not vibing. You're like shut off. This eclipse is this eclipse is getting to you. There's eclipse in your mind. I'm a little scared, and I'm I'm very cold. What are you scared of? It's just it's just uh it's a it's a crazy phenomenon that's about to happen in front of our eyes. Um. Oh, the sun's coming out. We can be. We might be able to see it. Wow, it's so skinny. It's so skinny. Okay, we got. Oh, there's not much left, guys. There's not much left. Just a few more minutes. Jesus Christ. And we're gonna. Oh, dude. Oh shit, bro. I just felt something. You felt something. Yeah, yeah, dude. I felt fucking. Yo. Dude, this whole so this whole shit's gonna turn dark. Yeah, it's all gonna turn dark. What the fuck, dude? This is getting crazy, bro. It's gonna turn dark. I'm scared. <sighs> nah. All right. No, nah, we should be good. 
Um, girl from New York, you know who you are. If you're watching this, I love you. There, I said it. I said it, buddy. You you have anybody tell you love her? Anyone out there? You have? Oh, you probably have someone in New York too that you love. Um, she knows who she is. It's a girl from New York that I visited for a couple weeks. I love you. I'm just trying to like figure out what's on my mind right now, but I just feel like everything's so empty just because I know that something phenomenal is going to happen. It's like something that's like, like a once in a lifetime kind of thing. Sometimes it's once in a lifetime. I mean, we're, get, we're getting another one in 20 years, but hopefully you never know. No, we know unless the world ends. No, or no, something. that we, we might not be there to see it. Yeah. All right, the guys, the temperature has, you know, we're, we're going to be, we're going to stop talking for a bit. We're just going to give you updates on how we're feeling. We'll do that during the eclipse. The temperature is currently Yeah, because I don't dropping. know if I can talk in this cold has yeah, weather. Yeah, it's shaking. So we're, you know, and he's not communicating with me. So we'll just go and giving you a breakdown on how we're feeling and what's going on. And whatever pops in our mind, dude, whatever pops in your mind, just say it. Whatever you're feeling, just say it. <clears throat> Okay, it's getting colder and colder. All right, we're not going to be able to see it because this cloud is in the way. There is a huge, huge cloud, cloud in the way, cock blocking the sun. Uh, so fuck that cloud. Um, as long as it gets dark. The old, where are the animals? Dude, what happened to the eagles? What the fuck? They dipped. They, Dude, they're scared. Th there was a lot of eagles out here. Are, are the birds singing? Let me see. Oh, do the birds. Bro, the birds are freaking out. They're going to freak out a lot more in a Do you few hear minutes. them? Yeah, I hear them. Guys, the birds are freaking out. Actually, let me take these headphones off so I can feel it. Ooh, I'm shivering, man. <laughs> I'm shivering. Uh, you have anxiety? <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. Uh, how All much right, time we got? We got four got? minutes on the clock, but it might come sooner. It's going to come this way. Four minutes on the clock. Four minutes but on the clock. But it might come the other way. There might be some weird science to it that it comes the opposite way. It might work like a camera lens. But, uh... Guys, we're trying to figure out where the shadow is going to come from of, of everything getting dark. Oh, dude, look at the sky. It's getting dark, bro. Look. That's just getting dark all over. Do you see? Look, look, look. You, you see how it's bright? Like, you, that should have been white, like... God damn, I can't even talk, bro. Dude, it was going to be four minutes. My speech minutes. is going away. It's going to be four and a half minutes of darkness. My speech is going away. Oh, yeah, dude. There's the guys, the birds weren't. Look. Wait, everything's, dude, everything's quiet as fuck. Or is it just me? Or is everything quiet as fuck? No, I, I would say just record on the, yeah. But unplug the microphone. Uh. <laughs> Yeah. Steezy, does everything feel quieter or is it just me? Um, yeah, I got louder. No, I can hear those birds very clearly. Guys, if you're listening to this podcast. All right, the sun might be coming out. The cloud is passing. The cloud is passing. Yeah, we're we're going to be able to see it, I think. Oh, shit, dude. We might get lucky enough to see it. Here it comes, guys. The cloud is passing. The cloud is passing. It's opening up. We might get a little bit. We might get a little bit. Wait, wait. wait let's just see. Well, it's still a couple minutes before totality. Let's just see with our eyes. Fuck it. Oh, shit. Look at it, bro. Wow, Look at it. Oh, it's oh, so no. thin. Oh, fuck. I poked my eye. Oh, Yo, by the way, fun fact. Fuck. The sun is 400 times larger than the moon, but the moon is 400 times closer to the earth than the sun is. Dude, I so see So from it. earth, there's an illusion that the moon and the sun are the exact same size. So when it covers it, it's like a, it's a perfect fit. Oh, oh, shit, yo, look at the shadows, Yeah, the bro. shadows are sharper. What the fuck? The shadows are sharper. Dude, this is sharp as fuck, dude. They're sharper ah, because... It's they're, they're sharp. It's sharper because there's oh, less... Oh, shit. ...less surface of the sun. Bro, what the fuck is getting dark, dark, guys? Hey, you don't need the glasses anymore. I apologize, yeah, guys. I'm saying the, the same shit over and over, but I've never shot a podcast during an eclipse. Oh, it's happening. So I think it's happening. So we can't talk. We're just going to be describing stuff. It's happening. Oh, dude, I think this might be it. <laughs> You think that's it? No, we we got like two minutes. How how much time do we have? How much time? Because because the app isn't so accurate. Oh shit! What the fuck? Should we stand up? Let's stand up. Oh uh, no no the camera no the, the camera okay. no. We'll sit down. To the eclipse. It's happening! Oh shit! It's happening! Hold on hold on hold on! Oh that's the fucking cloud covering it. 
Cloud, get the fuck out uh, the way. Oh, dude, it's happening. It's happening. It's getting is this, dark. Is this it? Is this it? Is this it? It might be. This is it, guys. This is it. It's getting dark. It's in one minute. Holy. Yo. Dude, I kind of want to stand up, bro. Let's do it. Let's make the cameras wide. Let's stand up. Holding them both mics. I want to stand up. Here, here. All right, guys. Live from the eclipse. Hold. No, no, there's no more wind. The wind stopped. Yo. Dude, what the fuck is happening, Steezy? It's, it's. Uh, it's oh, yeah, I hear owls. No, that's, those are humans. <laughs> yeah, those are, yo, those dude, are everything's getting dark. What the fuck? Oh, my God. Holy, yo, what the fuck? Wait. Dude, everything's getting so fucking dark. It's like I'm fainting. What the fuck? Yo, my skin. Bro, what the fuck? Jesus. Holy shit. Yo. Wow. Bro, touch my skin, bro. What? What's what's wrong with your skin? Holy. Wow. Fuck, dude. Yo. Bro, it's it's 1:30 p.m. It's 1:30 p.m. and it's it's like it's nighttime. Guys, everything's black. Oh, look, look, oh, look. Oh, shit. Yo. Yo. What the fuck? The eclipse, man. We see it. We see the eclipse. It's like it's like a, a black hole, but it has a it has the ring it's of a sun. It's getting darker, bro. It's getting darker. Oh, my God. It's oh, this is really dark. Oh, dude, this is dark, dark. What the fuck? This is fucking <laughs> strange, man. I can see the star. Yeah. Guys, we are just in awe. With no words. We're just feeling it. It's Once a in a lifetime. Sunrise. Once in a lifetime. 360 guys. sunrise. Fuck. You're listening to this. We are just watching. Everything is dark. People are screaming everywhere. We hear screams. What the fuck? Dude, something just touched me, bro. Maybe what the a, fuck, It sounded bro? like a bee. I wonder what the animals are thinking. Oh, shit. To see if you see any aliens. Do you feel anything? It's gonna be like this for five minutes. Yeah. You Can wanna try to, to you wanna try to have a conversation? Yeah, let's sit down back for a bit. Or should should we go look around over there? Hold on guys, I'm gonna go look for a bit. I just wanna I just wanna go around and look at the edge. We'll be back. Yo, yo, we're back, guys. We're back, guys. The eclipse is moving. We're getting back. The light's coming back. Holy fuck. Whoa. Yo, we're back. If you, if you were listening to this, we left for a bit to watch the... Holy fuck, dude. Whoa. It's getting brighter. Can we see it? Can I see that? Or am I going blind? Can we see it? No, no, don't look. Don't oh, we look. can't look. We can't look. Let's use our glasses. The cows are freaking out. Oh, look, the birds came. Yeah, the birds. The birds are out now. Dude, it coming back to light makes me realize how fucking dark it was. Yeah. Dude, that shit was dark. That was weird. That was very weird. All the birds are back. It's just like my brain doesn't know what to do with, like, it, it, it thinks that this is just a very fast sunrise. 
It, it felt like 2 a.m. And now it feels like 8 a.m., but it's quickly going to feel like noon again. Bro. What and why the... do the clouds move like that? Look at that. Well, we they got... move like, they're like crashing into each other. You're right. Is that because of the change in temperature? Oh, the temperature. <coughs> because, you know, two two different temperatures, they, they start circulating. Wow, man. Everything. Dude, I completely forgot it. We were during the day, like for a second. I forgot it was in the middle of the, of the fucking, it's 1 p.m., it's 2 p.m., whatever it is. I'm lost for work, guys. I can't talk. Trying to keep a podcast as the eclipse is happening is very hard. We got limited skills here. Um, how are you feeling, man? I feel kind of lightheaded. I'm not going to lie. Maybe because I ran to take a piss. Um, I don't know how I feel. Uh, my cock feels about the same size. So. Okay. <laughs> that's not good. I think I'm 6'4 now, by the way, guys. I'm 6'4. If anybody's asking, I am 6'4. <coughs> Fuck, man. You know what I think? I feel like our conversations weren't that deep during this podcast. It's just it's hard. It's harder to, like, think about something deep. It doesn't have to be deep. As it doesn't have to be deep. This. Um, I think it's I don't even know what the fuck we talked about, dude. Like, uh, my brain's not working. I mean, it's because we, we, we woke up at at 3 in the morning. Woke up at 3 in the morning. Because we this. thought there was going to be crazy Oh, the traffic. wind is back. Oh, yeah, the wind's back. Dude, the wind stopped. That, that is weird. Why did the wind stop? The wind stopped. There was no wind. Well, yeah, we, we, we woke up at 3 in the morning because we thought there was going to be crazy traffic driving over here. It turns out there was no traffic at all. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we tried sneaking in. Well, you tried. Sure. I tried sneaking in. Um, how, how are the angles? Did we fix them? It's not? C can you, like, get it closer? Keep going, See, You can keep going. I'm just... Um, come on, come on. You got this. We woke up at 3 a.m. Yeah, we woke up at 3 a.m. We drove over here, and we tried sneaking in at 5 a.m., and then the ranger instantly knew what we were up to. Well, you, you, why do you keep saying we? I got, I paid my ticket for this place. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and we were thinking of jumping the fence. Well, you were thinking about jumping. I was, th I was thinking of jumping the fence. Um, and then the ranger came over to us and he was like, hey, do you guys have a permit? Um, and we just kind of told him bullshit. Told him we're waiting for a friend to come pick us up. So we waited for you to come pick us up again. We get in the Jeep and... Um, you know, we drive over to a different area, and then they follow us. Oh, yeah. And and they keep they keep asking us like, "Hey, are you guys all right? Like, what are you guys doing?" But you could tell that they're they're subtly telling us, "Hey, we know what you're what you're up to, and um, we're not gonna let you guys in." So we leave for a little bit, for a few hours, and we come back once it's closer to noon, and uh, we just find a spot, jump the fence, and. Just well, run inside. Steezy did all that stuff. I got him a ticket from a guy and came in the normal way. Um, but, you know, now the eclipse is over, man. I think we can we can relax, take a deep breath. Thank you for everybody for join, joining us in this journey. Um, 20 years from now, that's going to happen again. Um, I don't know. I didn't feel too much. I feel lightheaded, but I don't know if that's placebo effect. I thought I was going to see some aliens, bro. I thought some, like, demons were going to come out. Maybe there was going to be an earthquake. Um, they're, they're saying that there's going to be an earthquake today. I don't know how they predict that. It's going to be in middle America. Yeah, I thought this guy was going to open up and I was going to see something, bro. I don't know. Like, it was cool. Uh, maybe I have to let it sit. Maybe something I have to let sit, you know. I think we might have hyped it up too much. <laughs> we might have hyped it up too much. Even though this is an amazing location to see this happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so we probably got the most out of an eclipse that anybody can get. Um, well, the sun's coming back out, guys. I notice it's also hard, harder to be present when you're being filmed and you have a microphone at your mouth. Yeah, yeah, we might have fucked ourselves with filming a podcast because we have to be. Because <laughs> the thing is, we have to be thinking about stuff that's not happening currently right now. 
You know, we have to recall I mean, stories. I mean, I I felt something. Yeah, what did you feel? Let's let's get a breakdown. The eclipse just happened, guys. Stacey, what did you feel during the eclipse? It just messed with my brain. It just made me think that it was nighttime. And uh, I'm still scared a bit. Yeah? I still feel a little terrified. Just, I don't, I can't really explain it. It's like that thing up there gives us life. Well, it dude, don't look at warmth. it with your eyes. Um, it's bad for you. That's fine. <laughs> and it just gets covered by something else, something else that helps us live. And we have no control over it. We can't stop it from doing that. So what if there's another phenomenal event that happens in space that is deadly to us? We can't stop it from happening. Yeah. You know, if an asteroid comes, maybe we could shoot rockets at it and try to um, well, like my head go hurts. off course. Your head hurts? My head's hurting, bro. Do you think that there's some, like, uh, stu- superstition to this? Do you uh, think that there's some, like, more than meets the eye frequency that comes from an eclipse? Yeah, dude, I think it's affecting, like, the chosen ones. Like, does you guys' head hurt? Yeah. No, like, like no, like, I'm being serious, dude. <laughs> My head's throbbing, bro, right now. I feel a little bit of a headache, but I don't think it's anything. Oh, my God, I think it's just because I'm tired. Dude, I think I'm hearing something, bro. Hold on. I'm hearing, bro, I'm hearing something. I'm legit hearing some shit. Is it the, the audio eclipse? recorder? No, no, the eclipse is talking to me. Sure. It's saying, what's that eclipse? Okay. Oh, really? Oh, shit, dude. What is it saying? This is what the eclipse told me. Here we go. No, no, no. The eclipse said, multiply and be bountiful and tell Steezy. To keep posting videos and not to give up. Because when he least expects it, he will succeed. And it told me when a girl does his message back to block her. And when I go to the club, don't be afraid to talk to that girl. You guys listening out there, tell that girl that you liked that you love her. This is the moment. If there's a girl you like in school, just tell her you love her. Go up to her and say, hey, I think you're very beautiful and I love you. Well, not, maybe, well, okay, maybe not. And the minute I think about it, don't say I love you. Tell her that she looks beautiful. What are you talking about? It's just the eclipse stalking through me, dude. I don't know. Blame the eclipse, bro. I'm getting fucked. Dude, it's very hard to shoot this podcast. I don't know why. It is because we had to wake up at 2 a.m. But let me talk for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You handle it, bro. This eclipse is like it's talking to me. Yeah, go, I don't know, it. guys. I don't know what's happening to Alejandro. Fuck. He's, he's tripping a little bit. <sighs> Something's happening to his brain. <sighs> no, um, I won't let you in. Jesus. All right. Anyways, um, I think what I realized from trying to shoot this vlog, and and I've had this feeling so many times, but right now I have to listen to it. I need to I need to hang my YouTube channel up on the shelf. What the fuck? Like I, I need a, I need a, I need to stop trying to keep doing this YouTube thing because my body is telling me, my mind's telling me no, no. But my body is telling me no. Everything is telling me no, and I keep, I keep thinking of that, um, um, what's his name, Jim Carrey, yeah, video where he says that depression is deep rest. Depression is your body or your brain telling you, fuck you. I don't want to play this character anymore. This era is over. And I'm still in the Steezy Kane thing. I'm still trying to do this, these quirky comedic videos where I sneak into places and I do these extreme challenges and I do pranks and jump off of structures for girls' phone numbers. I'm done playing that character. And I need to just take a leap of faith a second leap of faith because my first leap of faith was off the Santa Monica Pier and that shit was that shit was a real leap of faith I was 18 years old I flew to Los Angeles with $200 in my pocket I thought that would be enough for five days That's crazy. I had to sleep in a car because the place that I was sleeping at his parents kicked me out well they didn't kick me out I don't want it to sound like that they just said like hey you're overstaying um, so I had to sleep in a car 
And I wanted to film a video of me jumping off the Santa Monica Pier. That's been an idea I've had since I was 14 years old when I watched Angry Picnic do it. He jumped off the Santa Monica Pier in a straight jacket for a prank. And I'm like, I'm going to do that one day. I don't know why I'm going to do it. I don't know what the prank idea is going to be. But I'm going to do that one day. And I remember flying on the plane to Los Angeles. And this was my first time flying on a plane by myself. Well, I was flying with, with some of my friends. But it was my first time without my family. Because I flew a lot with my family. But this was like a, a crazy... Um, for me, being 18 years old, just graduating high school, going with these guys that I met off the internet, with $200 in my pocket, that was the first leap of faith. But the real leap of faith was me. I have no gymnastics experience. I don't have experience jumping from piers, jumping from bridges. I don't do any of that. When I saw the girl on the pier, I thought, I'm going to do it for her phone number. Because I was doing like quirky satire uh, picking up girl videos, like picking up girls with awkward pickup lines. That was a popular trend on YouTube. And I thought, oh, my God, that's the reason. I flew to YouTube without knowing the reason, but I'm like, I'm going to jump for her phone number. That's going to go viral. And when I'm talking to her and doing the improv stuff, like, hey, can I get your phone number if I jump off this pier? Yada, yada, yada. She's she's like, no, you're not going to do it. And I'm thinking, I'm, my heart's beating because I don't know if I'm going to be able to actually jump off this pier. I don't have any gymnastics experience, nothing. I'm going to have to take a fucking leap of faith. I don't know if I'm going to break my neck. I don't know if I'm going to break my arm. I don't know if I'm going to drown. But I have to do this. And I have to front flip. That's what's going to make it go viral. Lorenzo's filming. And I would say half of the reason the video went viral was because of Lorenzo's filming. He filmed it perfectly. The way he got that shot of me jumping off the pier made it go viral. And the way that he put in effort and went up to the lifeguards and asked them questions and everything, that made it go viral. But yeah, when I take a step back, and I tell him, you know, I give him the countdown, three, two, one, fear, nothing but fear in me. I don't have any experience jumping. Keep that in mind. I'm running, jump, and I'm, th I'm just doing what I think is going to be a good front flip. You know, it's about like a 50-foot tall pier. And, you know, diving off, I'm tucking when I think I should. I landed kind of okay. I landed on my face, and I ended up getting a migraine from that jump. Um... And we drove to a Starbucks, and I passed out from the migraine. The migraine was just so... Because I, I hit my head on the water. And, um, yeah, it was definitely not good for my health. I think I might have gotten, like, a minor concussion or some brain problem from that. But I was desperate at the time. I was hungry, and I knew I had to go viral. I don't want to be working a normal job for the rest of my life. I want to do YouTube. YouTube was the only thing I saw. And I just knew I had to jump off that pier. And I didn't know if I was going to die. Obviously, that's an extreme thought. I didn't know if I was going to break an arm or nothing. I had to take a leap of faith. And I think right now is t it's time for my next leap of faith. And this leap of faith is different because I'm going to have to make a decision on where I need to, what direction I need to take. But I know for sure that direction is not YouTube. I just, my heart isn't in it anymore. A hundred percent. Like, you're, you're committed to this. I think I'm going to have to take a scary leap of faith. I, I need to, you know, obviously it's not jumping off the pier. It's not something that's quick. Yeah. Th this leap of faith is, I need to make a hard, sharp decision on where I need to go, and I need to stick to it. When, and I think that's the TV show. I think it. I think it's that. When do you uh, um, plan on um, doing this? Like, like shutting... It's hard because I... Like a month from now, two months from now, or just like immediate, like, hey, no more videos. I'm done. It's hard because I just don't, I don't have the money to support me to, to take a break. And like, you know, people might say like, oh, why don't you just get a normal job? Why don't you just get a normal job? Just to go work at a cafe. What are you bitching about? I just have a lot of debt um, to where it's just a little hard. That That's the biggest thing. It's just... Yeah. Yeah. I wish when I was doing YouTube, instead of trying to play the whole YouTube game and hiring employees and spending crazy money on videos, I wish instead I just made videos how I always did and saved the money. I wish that I saved the money. Instead, I decided to pour it back into the business. And now here I am with $400 in my bank account. Yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> I think, dude, if that's what you want to do, 
as crazy as it seems that you shouldn't do it because you know three million YouTube channel. Um, I think you should do it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think you should do. It. I mean, if you wanna go to another phase of your life, um, life's too short to do what you don't want to do. <clears throat> So, I mean, I, th I think you should definitely, like, have a plan. Really plan it out. Like, hey, I need to post 10 videos to be financially free. And after that, I'll quit. And that might motivate you to just bank out those videos. Because um, you know they, how much you know money they're going to make. And you know after that, it's over. So knowing that there's an end to these videos might motivate you to make them. Because you know you only got 10 left. Um, instead of thinking you have to do this forever. And, um, yeah, dude, just make sure to shout out this podcast, right? Those 10 videos before you fucking leave. Jesus. Now, if you quit YouTube, do you think you're going to quit the podcast or how are you feeling? I don't think so. I don't think there's, I don't think there's a, a need to quit the podcast as well. Oh, thank God, bro. Jesus. Yeah, because you can still talk about your TV show and the podcast, you know. And, uh, I mean, can I make videos with you in them? Or you're also against that? Like, like I mean, whenever the, whenever I have a camera pointed at my face, I want to throw up. And I hate that I feel that way. You have a camera right now pointing at your face. I know, but when it's like in a vlog fashion, when I'm trying to do another YouTube video, like... I started to get to the point where, like, I remember there was this one time where I was at the Melrose Trading Post in L.A. And um, someone came up to me and they were filming, like, a, well, it was like a mutual friend. We were hanging out with friends. And, and someone was like, hey, man, let me get you on a on a, on an interview right now real quick. And then they kind of lift their camera up and he pulls out the microphone. And I tell him, no, nah, man, I, I just can't. I just can't. And I've never had that feeling come up where I have to tell somebody, no, like I just can't be on video. I don't feel like it. it. It doesn't make me excited. It's not worth me putting the energy into that. And I realize I'm saying that more and more often because I just, I don't, my body doesn't like playing the steezy character anymore. Because the whole steezy cane thing was, it, it, it's an alter ego I, I created in high school because I was desperate to be successful. I keep forgetting that. I keep forgetting that that's not you. I'm I'm introverted. I'm shy. But Steezy Kane is very outgoing and obnoxious. But like, it, I remember, I remember there was this guy in my high school named Jesus. And he was like the crazy class clown. He was always like yelling and screaming and roasting the teachers. But I remember, I remember observing him early in high school and I'm like, if if I can put my ego aside like this guy and maybe like become like an internet, you know, sensation, this is a really cool way to get money and, and, and maybe go viral. But that's not me. Now, eventually, once junior year came, I, ev I eventually did that and I created my alter ego, Steezy Kane. All the videos, all the prank videos you see on there is not me. Like, yeah, the creativity comes from my brain and all of that, but like, as soon as the camera turns off, I want to get out of there. And after a few years of doing YouTube, the alter ego caught up with me. And I am I started realizing that all these people that are following me, when people come up to me on the street and they want to take a picture with me and they're talking to me, they're talking to Steezy Kane, I feel like they're talking to the wrong person. And this all goes back to the TV show. This is what I want to make the TV show about. In this weird new era of internet money and, and clout and, you know, doing things for views, you kind of split your personality in two, the real you and the online you. Because when you're filming yourself, you're reading off a script or you're posting the 1% of your highlighted moments, nothing's real on the internet. And this is why social media is so bad for us because we're scrolling and watching the the highlights of our friends lives and we look at our own life and goes go like how come how come how come i'm in my bedroom and 
this person is at Bora Bora. This person is is just posted this crazy video with one million views. This person just just accomplished these amazing things. But well, let me ask you this question because you know more YouTubers than I do, and you know you know kind of inside of what it is. All these people are they experiencing the same thing you're experiencing? Where they're like, hey, I actually don't have money and this trip to Bora Bora is to make a video and I didn't really enjoy it because I was stressed out trying to make this vlog. Do you think most of them feel that way? Yeah. And, and when we see them like, oh my God, this YouTuber just went to Bora Bora. I, I, I don't know what the fuck Bora Bora is, but I'm saying it. This YouTuber, let's say, <laughs> they went on a cool vacation and we're like, damn, bro, look at us out here trying to grind it out. Yeah. And these guys are here in, uh, on a vacation making cash. Yeah. But they're and they are like stressing I, out. No, I, I know I know most people are, are like that. And it's so easy to forget it. Um then who's winning? I don't understand the people that are posting so consistently and and posting these huge videos. I, I just don't understand it. And sometimes I think like, do I live in a simulation and whoever's controlling the simulation is fucking with me? <laughs> and all these people around me are, are like the part of the simulation is to discourage the the person who's at the center and maybe I'm at the center I'm the I'm the test rat cuz I really try to break down these videos and I'm like there's no way that these guys can keep this up and like not burn out that is But maybe be. I just don't like it. Fuck. Posting one video a week is crazy. And then the thing is like <sighs> I mean you would you would think they would burn out at some point just like as a human being but I guess but the question is, how are they feeling? Because you, we see that as success. Oh, they're posting once a week. Man, they must be doing great. But they might be, like, hating their life. They're like, fuck, dude, I hate this. I have to post once a week because I have a big house now. I have all these cars. And if I don't post, I go bankrupt. Or they have the fear of falling off. So they have to keep posting to keep that image. And they're always in the constant fear of the views. What I always hear when I when I listen to people who are are posting consistently and doing big things on YouTube, they usually always say, yeah, I'm just doing this until it lasts. Because they're scared of it going away. They're scared of the momentum that they have going away. You know, people getting millions of views of video. And they're like, yeah, I'm just doing this until it, like, I don't know how it's working. I don't know how these people are following us and buying all our merch. And they feel a pressure that they need to keep it up until the wheels fall off. And yeah, that's a true thing. Like, they could think the work is miserable. But, you know, they just can't because they feel a pressure. They have to do it while it lasts. Maybe if they take a break now, it's going to start the downfall of it. So they feel like they can never, never take a break. Like Danny Duncan has been posting almost weekly for, I don't even know how many years. Weekly? But I think, yeah. Damn. But I think, I think um, we saw a little bit of the reality early this year when we saw a bunch of huge YouTubers coincidentally quitting at the same time. And then those are the ones that decided to come out publicly. Like, like for example, you haven't, but you secretly quit. How many YouTubers have secretly quit? Does that make sense? Because those are the ones that came out and made Who a gave video. gave up, but they're still, like, subconsciously they gave up, but, like, they're still trying? Yeah, yeah. Is like that you what you mean? Like, you see them post, like, once every three months, but that's technically them quitting. They just haven't made a video about it. Because basically, you kind of quit, but you just never made a video about it. Um, so, I mean, dude, like, back again to these kids that want to be YouTubers. What, 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 do you, what do you tell them? Is this life worth it? Or is it all an illusion that was sold to us about what YouTube's like? What, what, and I, I assume, like, there's, there's hardships in what I want to, what yeah. I aspire to be. But, of course, there's hardships in everything. But with YouTube and social media in general, the algorithms reward consistent posting. YouTube rewards weekly posting. And I just realized I'm more of a person who needs to post, who needs to submit my work less frequently. Like I would rather work on bigger projects, like how a movie director puts out a movie a year or an artist puts out an album a year. I mean, a movie a year is big for... Yeah, well, this is just an example. Like every two years every or... Every three years. Bro. Every three years or whatever. I would rather work in that fashion, but in YouTube, you have to post weekly in order for the algorithm to reward you. And if you don't, your numbers start going down because YouTube is a... 
they're a corporation and what they want is to have their consumers on their website as much as possible. And if your channel isn't posting consistently, they're not going to they're going to push you down. While the other ones who are posting consistently, they're going to reward them with views so with the recommended page. So you feel page. like it's kind of like a um like a slave machine that is like it's like they they get the fresh guys, they squeeze them to death. And then they get the new ones and squeeze them again, new and squeeze them like a rotating like slavery machine. I don't. I don't think. I don't think like the people in the corporation want it to be that way. But that's just how it has to be. No, 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 no. They want it to be that way because think about it. People are gonna burn out. You know, my favorite Black Mirror episode is the Smithereens. What's that? What was? I'm not even gonna describe it. Just no. What the it's fuck? It's doing exactly. Okay. Describe it. Just say spoiler alert. The the s- s- social media. Social media, I forget what the social media is called in, in, in that. By the way, guys, Black Mirror is a anthology of what? Of like, or a series of like. It's a TV series on Netflix about the dangers of technology, okay. I, w- I would say. I have and it's called Black Mirror because your phone is basically a Black Mirror. Okay. Um, And in that episode, uh, the social media, again, I forget what it's called but it's kind of a spinoff of Facebook or Twitter. Mm-hmm. And it grows to a point where um, the founder has no more control over um, where the company goes because they have board members. And the board members decide, you know, what happens. And the founder says that he didn't decide for any of this to happen. He wanted it to be a place where people connect. He wanted it to be a social media app for people to be social, but it turned into optimization and click-through rates and watch time and became a farm for attention. And that's what every social media app eventually turns into. Because if you don't lean into that, then your app dies because it doesn't make money. And, like, I think that's what is so hard about, about being in the social media world. I want, I want to throw my iPhone away every day. I want to, I want to get a flip phone. I want to, get this thing called a light phone which is this phone that has a kindle screen and it can only call and text but like my job is social media i have to post on youtube so i can't really take a break from it i can take a break from it but i'm gonna have to come back and i'm gonna get distracted again and being in this cycle of mindlessly scrolling uh sucks the energy out of me but i have to be in it because it's my job and i want to have my money come from somewhere else that doesn't rely on social media. Yeah. Um so 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 what do you tell these kids that want this job? I mean, you've been through it. I mean, let them know the reality, bro. We don't lie here. Let them know the truth. I mean, obviously this is my perspective, but like your perspective. I assume this is like 90%. But but we've seen, I mean, dude, I know four more YouTubers that I've helped grow same perspective. Same shit, bro. They all quit. They got nothing out of it. And now they got normal jobs. And, and the thing is that when they were in the moment, they didn't enjoy it because they were hustling on putting the money back into it, making more videos, waking up, editing. What's the next idea? And I never saw anybody enjoy it. Because then when you're there, you're just focused on growing in views. And I never, dude, I never saw anybody say, oh, dude, I love this. And they were enjoying the moment. It's always like when they're falling off, they're like, fuck, dude. I don't want to do this anymore. And I didn't even enjoy it while I was at the top. Or did you feel like you enjoyed it when you were at the top? No? Not at all. What were you feeling when you were getting the most the views? Only, the only videos that I had genuine fun filming, of course, there was a lot of stress during these videos too, is the coronavirus apocalypse whole lot of red in public um i left my phone at home and maybe like a few more videos out of i think i have 200 videos on my channel all the other 200 videos were pure stress it wasn't fun filming them the only fun is the last day of editing that's the only part that's fun and when I look back and I and I scroll through these videos and I ask myself, was this video fun making? Was this video fun making? Was this video fun making? And when nine out of every ten videos 
was not fun, it makes me think, like, why do I even do this? Do I do this to be famous? Do I do this to have a name? Do I do this to be cool? Probably. I don't get money from it, so I don't do it for money. Well, that's one reason that I do it, but I've never really gotten to the point to make money off of it. Um, so it's just like, so, so like the reality is like, Hey kids, it's not, it's not as pretty as it seems. It's ugly. All these kids who want to be YouTubers, who want to be influencers, it's, and the thing is, most people aren't going to do it through their passion because that takes years. Like, to blow up as a YouTuber through what you really love, you're looking at 5 to 10 years. Because that won't be stuff that's viral. That won't be stuff that's trends. That's just, for example, guys who, let's say they love, like, traveling. And they're doing that before YouTube. Like, you know what? I'm just going to point a camera at myself. And they slowly will grow because they're not thinking about the what's going to go viral. They're just filming themselves traveling. And then they slowly pick up a cool fan base in over five to ten years. They basically they didn't force themselves to change. All they did was point a camera at themselves. Does that make sense? Yeah. I feel like those are the only guys who who make it. Because they're like, hey, I'm already doing this. All I'm gonna do is point a camera at myself. I'm not gonna worry about going viral. I'm not gonna worry about like ideas, thumbnails. I'm just pointing a camera at myself and enjoy. Um, I feel like that's that's the only true path because you're not changing from YouTube. You're just pointing a camera at you. And uh, what most people have to do is it starts by like, hey, what's going to go viral? What can we do that's going to go viral? Oh, shit, yeah, dude, if you do this with this, if you cut people's headphones off and you give a new one, it's going to go viral. Oh, hell yeah, dude, let's do that. Let's get 20 AirPods. And, and technically... This is how it goes. We can't randomly cut strangers' headphones because that might be illegal. They might get mad. So let's fake it. Because they're probably on. Did you think they had to fake that prank? What are your thoughts on that prank? Um, Where they put scissors next to people's heads. I mean, definitely a lot of them are faked and others are real. From what I've seen, a lot of them seem very real. But I don't understand the people that, that fake their content. Well, it's easy. It's easier. It's easier, but you just say, "Hey, pretend like I'm I cut your Air- AirPods, and I'm gonna give you AirPods. Your headphones, and I'm gonna give you AirPods." And they're like, "Oh shit, okay." You know what do they do when they post it and they're watching it? Like, haha, that's so funny, but it's fake. Like, how do they deal with? The, I don't understand. How oh, they like deal with, the, with this, the imposter syndrome that they know they're fake. Yeah, or then like you know they have people come up to them like, "Hey, man, that video you just uploaded was so hilarious!" Like, have you ever had somebody like punch you, get mad, want to punch you, or like did you almost get jumped one time? How do they respond to that? They're like, "Nah, man, most people are chill, you know. <laughs> it's all good." Like, I don't see how that or do they, they that is fun? Do they have nightmares about getting exposed? That's fake. It's like, oh shit. I... <laughs> Or did they get DMs like, hey, man, if you don't pay me this, I'm going to say that you, that you hired me. I mean, the thing is, well, well, even, okay, let's forget about YouTube, dude. You want to get into film. I'm sure, bro. I mean, I've heard stories that actors that are on Netflix TV shows and they're worrying about paying rent. They're literally on a Netflix TV show. And they're like, dude, I can't pay my rent. Is it? I mean, it seems like it's the same in all art forms. It's just everybody on Instagram and puts their best face. I mean, they post themselves in the red carpet. Fuck Instagram. Instagram they post the themselves social media. with Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce. They put themselves with those celebrities. And you're thinking like, damn, do they got the blue check mark? They're on these celebrities. They just, they're on this Netflix TV show. Fuck, dude, I wish I had that life. But deep inside, dude, they're fucking trying to memorize scripts, bro. Their director's trying to touch them. They have to, like, <laughs> pretend. You know, they, they're, like, they're looking at their bank account. The check might not drop because the show might not get picked up. Or maybe there's, like, delays on how they pay them. And um, they got to go on this trip because the other actors who are more famous invited them. And they want to network, so they got to take out a loan. They got to take out credit cards. And then at the same cards. time, they, they, their manager lands them a role for this other movie. 
not lands them a role. It's a possibility. But before they audition, they have to read a whole book to study the character. Just in case. And they, they need chosen. to do that while being on the trip for the other thing. Must, must. And then, like I said, dude, they, maybe they get it, but they still don't get paid for like six months. And they're broke for the six months. So the check comes and they got to pay half of it to taxes, some percentage to their manager. And they're like, damn, Publicist, bro. Publicist, accountant, lawyer. They're like, I just made 30K. That's all I made out of this 300,000 or four, 500, half a million dollar deal. I have 50K bank, in my bank account. So, dude, it might be the same. Do you try to be a director and all this? But again, I don't care about the money. Well, but like, you you just said the money is happiness. Yeah. So if but you're not like, getting if I paid, can, if I can put myself in a position to where I can make money while not having to post weekly, or else the algorithm shadow bans me, or if I can put myself in a position to where I'm more passionate about my work. You know, that's where I want to go. And the problem with YouTube is you don't build the necessary skills for transitioning into traditional media. You know, you could be running your own show on YouTube. You could have a cool little mockumentary series and whatnot. But you don't learn how to operate a writer's room. You don't learn how to develop a script within a studio. You don't learn how to work with a guild. You don't learn how to properly cast and work with a casting director. You don't learn all any of those traditional skills because your YouTube channel is still pretty much, even if you have 3 million subscribers, you running that YouTube channel is pretty much the same as you running it when you were doing it with 300 subscribers in your uh, parents' house. Would you say uh, a million subscribers is enough to keep someone living a decent, la a decent lifestyle? Or what, I mean, it ranges so much, man. What, What's the next million? I have so many friends that are millionaires. Some of them are have less subscribers than me. Like, it ranges so much. It ranges so much. But, like, I guess for the people that make the type of content that you make. The, that make the type of content that I make? Yeah, like pranks. Yeah, a lot of them are millionaires. Then why the fuck aren't you a millionaire, motherfucker? Because, because I don't enjoy it and I stopped and... Um, I just couldn't play that character anymore. Damn. If you only had pushed a little bit further, maybe you would have gotten in there. But I, again, I'm... <sighs> yeah, I just wish I, I, I saved money instead of pouring it back into the business and trying to... I, I guess that's, that's an advice you can give this up incoming YouTubers watching you. Mm, and that's something that you also learned. Like, when you start making money... Don't spend it. Don't spend it and try to make the videos bigger. If you're making money from the videos, they're working how you're doing them already. Just do it how you're doing it right there. You might get a huge urge to buy a fancier camera, to maybe hire a more expensive cinematographer, get, get a, get a, get a house. team, get a house. That way you can make more videos in the house. Get your friends to live Just with you. Just keep doing the videos how you're doing them right there. Even if you're making so much money... Just spend a year still making it. Because if you think about it, if you blow up and you start making money while you're making videos in your in your parents' basement, and all of a sudden you buy a house and, and get a team, don't you think that that change in content is going to affect the blow up? Just stay in that basement. Stay making the videos how you're making them. Because it's working. And do it for at least a year. Hold for a year. Put it in savings. And then decide what you want to do. Would would you? But you know the excuse might be like, "Hey, dude, but if I get a house, my content improves and I can pump out more videos." But they're working right now. Oh, but but dude, if I get my friends in the videos, then I, then it's easier for me to make content. But then, how did you start making money right now? How can you afford a house right now? They no, must be working. You're filming them. But like, but I can make twice as much if I get a house. You get a house and you're gonna start partying, and you're gonna start. But that's okay. Yourself, that's okay because yourself. life is short. You're gonna have a housewarming party. And then the next weekend, you're going to have a party. You're going to invite your friends over, and your friends are chilling. And you're not even going to feel like filming. You're going to tell, you, tell your friends, like, hey, we're not filming the video anymore. Let's just, let's just hang out. Because you don't have that pressure anymore. But You've like, got your space. But, but when, I guess, when can you live life? Because that, that's, that's a good argument. Like, hey, life is short. 
I want to enjoy my YouTube lifestyle. Would you say, like, fuck that? Save your money? And maybe you have to... Just have, take one year. Take one year to keep doing it how you're doing it. And then one after One year that, is not that long. When you're young, one year sounds like a long time. It sounds like a huge time. Yeah. Yeah. But when you get older, dude, one year is like past like a month. You're like, what the fuck? Already year already Bro. passed? Passes quick. You're 26 now, right? You oh, always say shit Oh, like tomorrow's that. your tomorrow, birthday. Tomorrow I turn 24. Wow, dude. 24. And I'm so pissed off that the eclipse happened today and not on my birthday. <laughs> it was just one day early. Dude, man. one day early, bro. <sighs> Fuck. Isn't that crazy? We just went through a total solar eclipse. I kind of forgot that that happened. <laughs> Honestly, after the eclipse, now I can talk better. I don't know why. The Like, before the eclipse, I just couldn't gather my thoughts or my yeah. words. Uh, guys, if you listen to the first part of this podcast, it probably sucked. Because we were just like, hey, hey, like how we said that solar eclipse was our transitioning it point. It was a transitioning, man. I, and I took a piss, dude. Like I felt stuff leaving my body. Yeah. Everybody took a piss, right? During the solar eclipse. I need to take another piss. Speaking of taking a piss. <laughs> I think we all took a piss. Um, oh, wow. What happened? We're at two hours. No, no. It's right there. You want to take a pee break? Oh, you can take a pee break. I don't need one, bro. I'm out here for the long run. Let's take a little interlude. No, no, you can go take a pee. I can talk to the fans while you take a pee. I mean, you take like... All right. Relax, but it's not that long where you need that time. It's easy seven inches. Ah. Um, yeah, guys. So, I mean, I, I've I've worked with a couple of YouTubers that, that have gone very viral. They've gone like 20 million views in a month. And uh, throughout different decades, you know, when I was 23, you know, I worked with my first YouTuber that blew up. Uh, then when I was 26... I work with another YouTuber that blew up, and um, and that's why when I started working with Steezy, Steezy was the third YouTuber that I work with. I try to give him advice. I told him, "Hey man, you have three years to become a millionaire. If you don't, you're gonna fall off, and then you're gonna lose all your money because you're gonna burn out. You're gonna get less views, and there's probably evidence of me telling him this." Maybe an older podcast, maybe in some blogs, but I'm so like, hey, dude, I saw this pattern with multiple YouTubers, and look what happened. Three years went by, Stacey fell off, and his and he is in this situation. So any guy, any YouTuber listening to this, you have three years, man. Save your money. We're telling you this, and any guys who want to be YouTubers, as soon as you start blowing up, how Stacey said, don't change up. Keep saving your money for at least one year to have a hundred grand, two hundred grand. Save as much as you can. Um, and the lifestyle, you know, Steezy made his life look very cool. I mean, we look back at it sometimes. We look at his old blogs. We were like, "Damn, dude, look at all the shit we did. It looks so amazing." But if you really go back to the time we were living there in L.A., dude, everybody was depressed. Phil was depressed. Steezy just kept going in his room, kept leaving. Keep going. He would stay in his room for hours, and he would never come out. And we, when he would come out, he would say, hey, uh, we're filming next week. I told the cameraman this, blah, blah, blah. And then he would go back in. That was L.A. <laughs> and, I, and, I'm, and I'm in my room. What the fuck is going on? And this was with every YouTuber, dude. I never met a YouTuber that said, hey, guys, we're going to go have fun today. Everybody relax. And then we have fun. It's always like work, work, stressing out. It was always like this with every YouTuber. Fuck, dude, we got to come up with some ideas, man. Like, well, what do we do? I'm stressing out. Like, I don't know if this idea is going to work. And it's always shooting. During the shoot, I don't know, man. I'm not feeling it. I think I think it's missing something. Like, we just need, like, a thumbnail. Like, we need to grab a thumbnail. And then that's just, it's just like that. It's just, it keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going. It's weird because uh, the job is to have fun, but it's not fun. So you have to kind of fake the fun. Yeah. I think about that all the time. Like when I'm out filming a vlog or filming some type of crazy video idea, like I got to be entertaining. I got to be like fun. But like, Behind the scenes, I'm just thinking, like, okay, well, where should we go next? Like, we should go here. We should get these props. Oh, we forgot the 
fucking we forgot the cable for the microphone that we're gonna use for the street interview segment. We gotta go back all of this. But like when the camera turns on, you have to have a smile on your face. It was like three, two, one. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my YouTube video. Uh today we're gonna blow up a Tesla. And we're hold on, hold on. I didn't say that right. I didn't say that right, man. But let here, let's do it here. Again. Let's cut. Uh let's roll again. Cut. My microphone's on. Okay. Is, it, is it my working? All right. Yo, what's up, guys? So we're back here. You know, we got the Tesla. We're going to blow it up. It's going to be crazy, man. It's going to be wild. We're going to have so much fun. We got, uh, you know, Jamie in the video. Hey, Jamie, what's going on, man? What's going to happen? You pretend to be Jamie. Oh, hey. Uh, oh, shit. I came in too late. Should we start over? No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, we, okay, I, okay, I can just okay. it. Go, go for it. Uh, Yeah, man. We're going to blow up this Tesla. It's going to be really cool. And um, yeah, if you like the explosion, give this video a like and comment and subscribe to my channel. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, guys, go uh, follow Jamie at all his social medias. Go kill him, man. Smash the like, subscribe button. Why Why Jamie? Why did you pick Jamie? I don't know. It just came. And uh, well, 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 anyways, another thing that you just reminded me of what I wanted to talk about. I also, doing YouTube, YouTube videos and doing these crazy ideas, um, it dulls life because you have to do all these crazy things like. Uh, oh, shit. I didn't even think about that. Like, uh, you know, the video where I surprised my brother with skydiving or the video where I climbed a billboard and I covered the lady with a censored sign. Um, or what's another thing that I did? I started a mass snowball fight in New York. Like all these crazy, like adventurous moments when that becomes a job and I'm thinking of the video ideas while I'm doing it. I'm just thinking of the video. And now in real life, I can't really enjoy crazy <laughs> things that happen because i'm just doing it's my job to do crazy things it's like this solar eclipse we didn't really enjoy, well we kind of this we step away from the cameras yeah to enjoy for a second i would say the first the first minute of it being dark was crazy yeah but then it was just like uh, okay yeah this is it's dark it's nighttime this is uh yeah but like it, it desensitizes you to life and now I can't really find the joy in walking a dong because I'm used to um, having snowball fights and and skydiving and jumping off of air. Oh, yeah. Sky jumping, jumping off of uh, uh, peers for peers. girls' phone numbers and and doing all this, this crazy things that that initiates the cliche words in a YouTube video. Wow, that was crazy. Wow, that was Damn, I can't believe that. You know how many YouTube titles are, are titled, I couldn't believe this happened. Yeah. Um, or, or or like, I know we said this last podcast, but like taking a trip with a stranger, taking a stranger on a date, you know, all those things, man. Like when they go on real dates, what must that feel like? Because they've gone on these crazy dates with all these strangers, well, strangers, right? But they've done so many videos on dates that a real date is probably like, oh, dude, this is boring. Like, this is a legit real date with this girl, and I'm bored because we're not jumping off of stuff. Or do you think that they ever go on a date, and it's really fun, and they're like, I should have filmed this. Or that. <laughs> or that. Like, fuck, dude. Like, next, yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of, it's a weird thing, dude, to be filming your life. It's like we're selling a piece of our life to the internet. And then you can't live your real life. It's it's such a new job. There's no resources for it. Like, I thought about this, dude. I think, I don't know who I was talking to, but I thought about, like, making, like, a group for failed YouTubers that they can get together and just talk about it. You know? No, no, dude, because that's needed. Like, who can understand a failed YouTuber other than another failed YouTuber? That's so wonky. And like a fail YouTuber camp. Like you go there as a fail YouTuber and you just rehabilitate. What is this? Um, rehabilitation. YouTuber rehab? Yeah, YouTube rehab, dude. Because, I mean, look at you, bro. You're broken. YouTube broke you. I mean, uh, you're a little bit more self-aware because you always kind of did plan to quit YouTube. But imagine the people who actually thought this was going to be their life. And all of a sudden it hits them. The views aren't there. They're getting older, and they're like, fuck, dude, I'm not that guy anymore, and I really still want to be that guy. 
And then you start posting videos and they get less and less views. You used to get 10 million, now you get 1 million, then you get 100,000. And the problem, here's, here's what stresses me the most. You didn't switch up your content. You did nothing different. You keep doing the same videos, and yet they're getting less views. So that stresses out because you don't know what to fix. So like, dude, what do I fix? I'm doing the same thing, but I'm not getting results. So the next video you post, dude, you're just all stressed out that if it's going to do good or bad. It's a hard job, man. Like, I, I remember people made fun of this guy. I don't know his name. But he said, like, social media is a hard job that people that work normal jobs cannot understand. And they all made fun of him. Like, dude, shut the fuck up, dude. Social media is so easy. Blah, blah, blah. You just never worked a day in your life. I can say this. At 18, I was working doing taxes. At 18, I was doing taxes for people. Like, I did multiple tax returns. I took classes to do these taxes. And I was at an office. And I got paid $8 an hour. Think about that, dude. I was getting paid $8 an hour. And I worked eight hours. How much is that? $64. So I was making $64 a day, right? Mm -hmm. I would drive one hour to my job. You were making the same amount of money I was making at CVS. Well, dude, I would drive one hour to my job, and I would drive one hour back. So technically, dude... I would have to drive one hour and 10 minutes. Well, well I guess if you put it... Technically, that's 10 I'm just, hours. I'm just kidding. But, but technically, dude, think about it. That's 10 hours of my life. Yeah. So now it's, it's not actually $8 an hour. It's like 7 because if you had those two hours. Mm -hmm. And then, dude, I would spend... I think it was like $12 of gas just getting to my job. So then you have to subtract that from the 64. So 12, what does that leave me? Like 52? And then I would eat lunch. I would get a $7 Subway Club thing. So now you take have to take that of the $52. So 52 minus 7, what is that? I can't do math right now. 42? 45? 45. 45. 45, dude. I worked 10 hours for $45. And not even then. Here, here's, the, here's the even funnier part, dude. I still had to pay a phone bill, car insurance, and taxes, dude. I well, was the working. taxes get taken out for you. No, no, no. no. Oh, self-employed? No, 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 no. You got to pay, bro. That's why you pay. They, they, I mean, No, but do, do you get, did, did you do a W-9? No, bro, get... I'm getting paid $8 an hour. Yeah, but they take the taxes out for you. When of your paycheck. The... Yeah, they, they take no, it out for you. Right, no, but I'm they saying... they take too much. But no, but I'm saying... And no, no, but annually, I'm... No, they're but, like, but, hey, but I think I'm... we took a little too no, much. No, 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 dude, but I'm saying... Tax that's not including the hourly rate, the taxes. They take it off your two-week paycheck. That's true. So I'm still getting paid that. So as I'm saying, you still got to take off this $45. Yeah. You got to take off the taxes, which is like 15%. Mm -hmm. so that put me like at 30-something. And then phone bill, uh, you know, fucking car insurance. So, dude, I'm working 10 hours a day for like 32 bucks. What the fuck, bro? Yeah. Dude, and I remember just looking at the clock. The, the, this is the worst part, dude. That I didn't mind doing taxes. But I realized, oh, dude, I can take, I can do like one or two or three tax returns. No matter how fast I do it, the clock doesn't move any faster. And I hated that, dude. I hated that no matter how good I was at my job, it had to be one hour before I got paid. And that stressed the fuck out of me, dude. Because I would just be looking at the clock constantly. Yeah. Like, how many times before I leave? Okay, three hours before I have to leave. Okay, two hours. And it's like, okay, I, I get to leave home, sleep. And then I have to come Do it all back, over again. dude. And then I would look at my paycheck after two weeks and be like, ain't no fucking way, bro. <laughs> ain't no fucking way. How much, how much would it, a check be after two weeks? Just do 30 times five. Well, actually, that would work six days. That's 180. Like 360. But let's say $400. At best case, I'd do $400 in two weeks. That's about how much mine would be. Sometimes it would be like 350 
and I would work six days a week at CVS from nine to five or from four to eleven. And uh, after a year of working there, my manager came up to me and he was well. Actually, he texted me. He was like, "Hey, can you come into work an hour early tomorrow?" And I was like, "Uh, okay." So I came in at three, and uh, he tells me, "Hey, we're in the back. We're having a meeting." And I'm like, "Oh, damn! What is this about?" Um, because I was kind of like sneaking some candy off the shelves. What the fuck? Uh, <laughs> so I go back to the. I go to the to the back. I'm thinking I'm getting fired. And then I see them all sitting there, all the employees sitting there. And then, you know, I see my manager wave over to me to come to the table. I nervously sit down. And then my manager's like, Isaiah, uh, you've been getting the highest customer rating out of everybody. Oh, shit. Um, you've been working very well. And uh, okay. I think you're actually the best employee here. Oh, fuck. So I think it's time to give you a raise. Oh, I was shit. Nine... Here we go. Do big time money. I was getting $9 an hour. Okay. So we're going to get like $18? And then, okay. and then, and then he, he hands me the paper. At least $2 new, more. Okay. My new report or whatever. And it was $9.15. What the fuck, I got a 15 dude. cent raise. And he told me to come in an hour early for that news. And, and it turns out, like, I left the break room. <laughs> At like three fifteen, so I had forty five. Like that meeting took fifteen minutes, and I got fifteen more cents. So let's do the math on that. You get paid nine dollars an hour, right? Yeah. How many hours will it take for those fifteen cents to accumulate to nine dollars? Let's do the math. Ten hours is one dollar and fifty cents. So twenty hours would be three dollars. So dude, you would have to work sixty hours. For those fifteen cents, to uh, come up for those nine dollars, that hour that you came early, dude. So after sixty hours, that math was wrong, by the way. <laughs> no, why? That math was wrong. No, no, why? Fifteen cents times ten. It's not ten dollars and fifty cents. No, there's fifteen times ten. Times ten. I'm saying times ten just to make it easy. That's ten hours. Times ten hours. He's doing the math right now. No, no, dude. We're not worried about the nine. Okay, nine dollars divided by fifteen cents. Yeah, sixty hours. Sixty. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Dude, yeah, right. come on, bro. I did taxes. So think about it, dude. Because he made you come early to give you that news. Damn. It took you sixty hours for you to break even. In that hour he told you to come early. Jesus. And how many hours did you work a week? Um, I don't know how many I worked a week. Um like if you had a guess. So I had school, so I had I would have to come in an hour late every day. Eleven well He's doing the math in his calculator. I guess he cause he can't do it in his so head. Six times four. Twenty four. Twenty four. Keep that in mind. And then also seven times times two. Times two. What fourteen the? plus twenty four. Thirty eight hours a week. 38 hours a week. So I guess after after almost two weeks, that 38 hour. times 9.15. Um, How did you feel about that raise? $47 a week? It was not that much. You know, well, taxes will get taken out. And everything. How did you feel about that raise? Um, when he told you. Well, the, the thing that really annoys me is I thought that was a good raise. At that time, you were like, Holy I was 16, 17 we're, years we're old. big time. I was 17 years old. Yeah. Well, I mean, my first reaction was like, Thanks. In my head, I'm like, what the fuck? This is good news. Just yeah. keep me at the nine dollars. <laughs> but then like <laughs> shit. Like uh, you know, as days pass by, I was just trying to tell myself like maybe fifteen dollars is is I mean fifteen cents is, is a normal raise that everybody gets. So I just started brainwashing myself, like maybe that's what everybody gets. So then I started to believe like, okay, that's just a normal raise. Fuck no, that's not a normal raise though. Well, at least you got a raise. I never got a raise. Uh, but you know what? I take back my previous statement about social media being harder than a normal job. Now that I remember my normal jobs, fuck social media influencers, dude. We're being pussies. Fuck that shit, dude. I, I, I join the people now. Because now remembering, dude, what I went through when I had a normal job, even when, when I did construction, when I was in the hot sun, I used to fix uh, uh, sewer pipes. Where there's shit, you dig a hole, there's shit popping off the ground, you have to dig a hole to find out where the shit's coming from. You find the pipe, 
There's shit coming out. You have to cut the pipe. And if it's pressurized, the shit shoots up. So you're hoping that it's not pressurized. You're hoping nobody flushes. Because when you cut it, if somebody flushes, dude, that turd's going to come out. So you're hoping nobody flushes. And you can fix it in time. Jesus. And I, and sometimes, I mean, do what you... What happens if the shit comes out? Well, you will wear, like, a rubber boots. Because the shit would come out. And you just have to, like, fucking fix it, bro. Um, and it was hot. The problem with Texas, it gets very hot. So you're sweating, bro. And at that time, I was young, so I had acne. I had a lot of acne. And the last thing you want to do when you have acne is to be sweating surrounded by shit. Because <laughs> it goes into your pores. So you know what, dude? Fuck that shit, dude. I'm back with the people, dude. We're being pussies. Because making $10,000 over shooting one video what I do is miss- a lot of fucking money, dude. So fuck that shit, dude. We're doing pussies with all this fucking depression, uh, espresso bullshit, bro. It's a blessing, dude, that we can shoot out a stupid video and make $10,000. You know how long that would take me doing taxes? Let me do the fucking math right now, buddy. $300 a month. No, no, a week. Well, $400 a month. What did we say? Let's say $600 a month. Times 10, 6000 what the fuck, bro? You know what? I'm doing this math wrong. No, yeah, dude. I would earn $600 a month. Times 10, that's 6000 So you're telling me one video would be two years of my life? Dude, we're being pussies, bro. Do the math on your CBS shit. How much were you making a month? Just do it anyway. How much? Just tell me. I'll do it in my I think mind. it was like 800 a month. Goddamn. Okay, 800 a month. So, dude, one YouTube video, dude, was one year of working at CBS. One video that you make $10,000 is one year of working at CBS. Well, where I'm kind of leaning towards is because I really miss the routine. Um, I really want to try to get a writing job or a producing job. And I think I would be able to. No, no, but but do you hear what I'm saying before we change subject? Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. How I mean, we're, I mean, we're kind of being pussies with whole. I mean, I like, would never go back to CVS. That's not even. That's not even a. That's not even. I've never thought about that. Of course, I know that. No, no, CVS. Is but worse. what I'm saying is that we forget how lucky we are. That you can post a video and you can make ten thousand dollars. I mean, I can't. No, no, but once you pick up traction, that you get a brand deal, gives you five thousand, can even give you twenty thousand. Once you build up traction, I think, I think here's what you might need to do, man. You might need to go back and fucking work a normal job, just to get that fire back. To be like, oh, dude, I forgot what the real world was like. The real world's harsh, and, and you don't get to sit around and be depressed. I think that's what we're missing, bro. We we lived in this cozy for too long. I forgot. I forgot, dude. I forgot what a fucking real job, how it kills your soul. Because all those hours just to make that small amount of money. And then at least, bro, at least you travel. And you had fun stories to tell, fun stories to look at. Versus, dude, I was just in an office. And when I look back, it's the same memory each day. Just crunching numbers. For a whole year. That's my memory, dude. Crunching numbers for a whole year. I can't look up back and say that I jumped off a fucking airplane. Jump off the pier. Dude, we're, we're being pussies that first 30 minutes that we're talking about social media. We need to remind ourselves, dude. We're not grateful. I think what happened, dude, we lost being grateful. For this opportunity. I tried being grateful for like the last two years. And I tried sticking to it. You know, I, I mean, if I'm saying something, if I'm saying how I feel, I know that it's true because it's how I feel in that moment. I'm not going to just switch up something that I'm saying. No, no, I'm not saying that it's, it's not true how you feel. I'm not saying that's not true. This is how you feel. But I'm saying yeah, but like, we lost perspective. On, I tried to keep my perspective for so long. And it's it's never, I've tried to keep doing YouTube and it's just. It's like I, I cannot pull myself to do it. Um, 
I no, think... I hate social media. I hate social media so much. I hate doing YouTube. And I'm 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 not gonna just like switch up what I'm saying. I don't think you're. I'm... I don't think what I'm saying is hitting you. So it's but, not right. So I uh, will just agree to disagree. But it's hitting me. It's hitting me, dude. And I'm gonna get the fire back because I know I'm not again. there anymore. I mean, uh, it's not like I'm saying CVS was better. I've never said that. I've never said that. I've never even thought about going back to CVS. What the fuck? Um, that's not even in the equation. Um, I would be so delusional and so stupid to even think to, like, I mean, I can land, I mean, I'm pretty sure I can get a writing job or a producing job that pays 100K a year with my YouTube as a resume. And Didn't like you have that's a something that's, that worked for like BuzzFeed that was getting paid like he was getting paid 8k a month. God damn. And like he he doesn't like if I have built a YouTube channel up to 3 million subscribers with 350 million total views. Yeah. And I've produced all this content and worked with sponsors like Audible and Converse and and Hulu and HBO Max. Of course I can land a 100k a year. And he had job. a resume, right? And like that's something that I might want to do. I I just made my uh producer resume and I'm actually really proud of it. It has a lot on there. And I think I can land a really high-paying job that gives me a routine back. Like, C- CVS is, I'm, I'm so much bigger than, than those jobs now. Like, when I'm talking about this, that I don't want to do social media, I'm not talking about going back to, to Jack in the Box. I'm By talking way, about... We're not shitting on these jobs. Ta- we're just saying how hard they are. That we don't want to go back there. Hell yeah, I want to shit on them. Um, they're, they're not... I mean, like, before you could work at McDonald's and save up for a for a down payment on a house in like two to five years now that's not possible at all the average price of a home versus the average salary is so far gone like the economy is going to shit and this this bubble is going to pop very soon because again the gap between the average salary and the average price of a down payment on a home is just so crazy far now you can't work at mcdonald's and say yeah, I'm working here to save up on a on a house. What the fuck? You're working at McDonald's trying to save up for a house? Yeah, it's going to take 50 years today. So that's why it's like the 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 economy is just oh my god. Yeah. But like you know, I want to work with instruction. I really envy people who can work under someone and work with instruction. Whereas this YouTube channel, I'm the boss. I have to decide all the creative, the creative paths to go down, and everything is every decision is tied up in my identity because this is my life's work. It's under my name. My YouTube channel is my face. You know, I wanna, I wanna go into my phase. I wanna go into my Donald Glover Thirty Rock phase, where he got a job to work as a writer for Thirty Rock. I I, I think it's time for me to. To quit YouTube and and see how I can help somebody else with their show or their network or whatever. What if you work for me? I know you and you are the most unorganized person I know. I know you can make good money, but yeah, man. I mean, I think you could tell. I, I can tell what type of worker you are by looking at the desktop on your laptop. It just has a hundred pictures and a hundred folders disorganized. When you shoot something, where do you put those files? Uh, desktop. I, everything yeah, everything like, goes to desktop. When, you, when after we shoot this podcast, you're putting these video files on your desktop. Desktop. That's terrible. Everything goes on desktop. And I have a hundred tabs open in my Google. Like there's this company that I want to reach out to called Hogarth and they have offices in Austin. Um, you know, I want to try to see if I could get a job with them or even Condé Nast, which owns Vanity Fair. Um, I don't know, man. I just I, I think it's really time for me to to do something different. It's time for me to do something different, man. Shit. All right, dude, let's wrap up this podcast then. Because uh, my car's yeah. probably getting towed. And uh, if I have a chance to get it before it gets towed... It's kind already of, gone, no? I he says it's not. Oh shit! Well, yeah, we so should we go should back research. There. How about we should probably go the the right way. Yeah. And if they say anything, it's like, oh, my car is not working, so I went to go get some help. 
you <laughs> just say something random like yeah oh like the trash can was blue and like the cloud didn't dissolve right so we we um, triangled up here fuck that we're not going back the same way yeah do you um, see what happened to our legs but guys thank you for watching this podcast i hope you liked it i know the first half was kind of shaky uh we had walked like three miles to and get up to, to this mountain Woke up at 3 a.m. But we did want to show you guys, you know, we want to shoot the first podcast during the eclipse. Uh, World's first podcast ever shot during a total solar eclipse. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's and crazy. Uh, I wish we had talked better things. I uh, wish we talked better things. Just from that vocabulary, you can understand. It's just like everything. Uh, I don't know, man. I feel like uh, I think towards the end we did better. Uh, I just—I actually don't remember what we talked about, dude. I don't remember what's going on. I'm still like... We're all sleep deprived. Yeah, I don't know what's going on right now, guys. Uh, but thank you for watching. Um, you know, as your heard, Steezy was probably going to quit YouTube after a bit. He's just, he already quit in his mind. He just has to do it officially. Um, but I'm going to make him shut out this podcast before he quits. Because at least, you know, let's blow up this podcast. Because this is something he can do. Um... But yeah, I mean, uh, make sure to listen to us everywhere and, uh, you know, like us on everywhere and leave reviews about the best solar eclipse. Leave a comment of where were you during the eclipse and what you felt. Uh, make sure to do good in the world. And uh, take some time in the morning to be gracious in yeah. your success. To be grateful Gotta be for grateful, your family's man. health and for your health and everything that you appreciate in life. All right, man. And with that, uh, yeah, we're signing off. All right. Awesome.